Texas Motor Speedway. Everyone is ready to stake their claim, but only one driver will be the Lone Star. It's the NASCAR Cup Series on Fox. The green flag waves. Out here, danger finds you. It does not feel right. Feel high nose in traffic. What the hell's he doing? Blink. Fun in the middle of the pack. Trouble. Look hard to the wall. And get beat. Further back. I have a rear tire going down. Let's go. Keep getting up. And being the fastest. A dominant driver in a dominant car has dominated Texas. Is the only thing that matters. Check a flag right here. Check a flag. Hit it. Hell yeah. Let's go. It's Texas. Time to take what's yours. Welcome back to the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400 at Texas Motor Speedway. Eight races in to the Cup Series for 2024. Hendrick versus Gibbs has been the story of this year. They've won seven of the eight races between them. 22 top 10, or top fives rather. 34 top 10s. What a start to the season. And look at the laps led. A huge margin there. And they share the front row with Kyle Larson owning his third straight pole position of the season, a winner here in 2021. And Ty Gibbs, for the fourth time, matches his best career start. Let's talk to him, Mike. Ty Gibbs, Kevin and Clint up in the booth. You got a track temp 30 degrees higher than when you started practice yesterday. What do you think uh, is going to happen at the start of this race? What do you expect? Yeah, hopefully I can get the lead, get clean air, and, and drive away. So that would be really nice. But hope you guys have a good one up there and then enjoy my racing and hope you have a good day. All right, man. Keep it straight. We're, uh, we'll be watching. Good luck. Yep. Keep it straight. <laughs> <laughs> row two. A Chevy and a Toyota Chris, or two, all Toyota second row. Christopher Bell has his best start of the season. And Tyler Reddick, the winner here in the fall of 2022. Tyler Reddick, boring the boys up in the booth. You got us? Yes, sir. I got you guys. Man, oh, man. Got a fast racetrack here. Mile and a half track. Last time I was on a mile and a half. You were hot, just like this racing surface is going to be today. What do you got for me? Man, uh, we got a fast uh, Beast Unleashed Toyota Camry. We got Bun B in the house, and uh, we're going to go out there and try and get uh, this 45 back to victory lane. Well, you've certainly been quietly on a roll. I mean, are you ready? You got Beast on the hood of this thing, right? You ready to go to Beast mode and get the job done today? That's what I like to do. That's how I like to drive. So we'll be getting after it, that's for sure. I can't wait, man. Good luck out there. Row three, we got the top qualifying Ford with Chase Briscoe and last week's winner, William Byron. Jamie? Well, Kevin, you guys keep talking about the hotness today, the hottest driver in NASCAR, William Byron, coming off his third career win or third win of the season so far. And I talked to Rudy Fugel, his crew chief. He expects a lot more of the same. He said this is a fast car. He also said he expects a lot of cautions today, a lot of opportunity to work on this race car to keep up with the changing track conditions. Hey, they figured it out here. Last time we raced here in the fall, they went to victory lane. Okay, row four, we got Ryan Blaney, last year's champion, folks. And then Austin Sendrick, best Texas start. Regan. Mike Ryan Blaney has been extremely good here at Texas Motor Speedway. Eight top tens in his last 10 starts at this racetrack, including a win in the 2022 All-Star Race. He is carrying momentum off of a fifth place performance last week and a good practice session yesterday. The team told me if the groove moves up on the track today like they anticipate it will, that will be their strength. That is what they want to have happen to see Ryan Blaney get his first win of the year. Row five, a pair of Toyotas, Martin Truex Jr., three times a runner-up here in Texas, and Bubba Wallace, who led the most laps here in last fall's race and finished third. Row six, we have three-time Texas winner Denny Hamlin and last year's runner-up, Ross Chastain. Larry? Yeah, I think it's been well documented. This is a fast mile and a half racetrack, but what makes it unique, the two ends are very different. Now, a goal of the track this fast is to get the rear of the car down for aerodynamics. Texas creates challenges for that. Let's go to our Toyota Camry car, cutaway car, and let's talk about what goes on in the rear of the car. Now, you're going to see right here, you're going to see the two left rear and the right rear coilover shock assemblies. But let's focus on the right rear. As it goes into the corner, you see the spring compressing as well as the shock. 
Internally, there's a travel stop inside that shock. Now, as the shock travels, that polyurethane spacer, it's okay to hit that, but if you travel it too much, it bottoms out in that shock, metal to metal, and across those bumps in three and four, it de-wedges the car, guys, and makes it very loose. In the perfect world, you'd love to travel one way in one end and one way in the other. Well, we're definitely not living in a perfect world here in Texas, guys, because this is a really, really unique racetrack. The biggest thing that these guys had to decide overnight, how much slower is the pace going to be? How much can I lower my car? Well, we're going to see if they got it right here at the beginning because you want the car as low as possible in three and four, maybe touching those bump stops just a little bit. But, man, if you touch them too much, it's a, you're going to be in big trouble. And it's because it's very bumpy down in three and four. You hit one of those bumps, bottoms that shock out like Larry's talking about, the rest is history. Goodbye. Now, when we got to the tr uh, track this morning, it was 64 degrees and full clouds. Now it's up to 86. It is buggy, and the track temp 117 degrees. Pole sitter Kyle Larson talked about his Indy test earlier this week and about qualifying here. For sure, that doesn't uh, hurt to, to feel you know 220 something there, but it's surprising like. This felt way faster today, just because the the lack of grip. You know, the Indy car there was cold and overcast, and uh, the track was green, so it had a lot of grip to go along with that speed. So you don't really get that sensation. But here today, like I've I've felt on edge. You know, it definitely doesn't hurt when you can go to 20 something. You know, a few days ago. Wow. This is edgier than Indianapolis. Well, this the, the sensation of speed here is just so high in the corners. That was yesterday. 30 yeah. degrees hotter today. Very, very different. Going to be even slicker. Three stages, 80, then 85, then 102 laps to finish it off. Fuel window around 70 laps. Well, Mike, we, ha we have to take care of our race car right here because turn one and two is going to be different with all the traffic, with all the heat in the racetrack. We know the cars have been a handful, but guess what, boys? They're going to be even more of a handful today, so you better be ready. And the race for track position, that clean air, just like Ty Gibbs told us about, that is so important. Pace car is in. They address themselves to the start line, and we are underway in Texas. A very orderly start. Nobody jumping out of line. Well, and we saw the horsepower right off the bat. We talked about it yesterday, the horsepower in that five car and how good that thing handles down the straightaway. Uh, just drive away from Ty Gibbs uh, through, the, through the middle of one and two and off a turn two. Well, I saw it through the middle, and what I saw is the loud pedal. That right foot stayed down farther on the five than it did that, the Gibbs on that outside. That's hard to do. You drive in door to door, not knowing the grip level in your race car or anything else. That was a smart heads up move, veteran move by Ty Gibbs. Let's go ahead and settle in here. Make sure we got the grip we were looking for. Single file back to seventh. Cindric and Wallace, a Ford and a Toyota battle. Truex looking on. That's for eighth place. Well, I'm really interested to see if these Fords can hang out in the front of the pack. See Chastain in trouble off of turn four. You see them all starting to stack up behind him there, getting off into one. Yes, look at this. Still, I don't have it sorted out. That was all stacked up behind Chastain, just right in front of this pack. Now, three drivers had to start in the rear. Kyle Busch in a backup car, Jimmy Johnson after crash repairs, and Kaz Grala changed a steering rack after yesterday's qualifying. We've seen this racetrack run uh, two races now. They did not put any resin in the second groove, but we've seen that second groove already been run in in the Xfinity cars and in the truck series. So you see the cup guys really comfortable uh, being able to go up there right Ooh, off the bat. That was super close with Todd Gilliland. They still don't have it sorted out back here. Tenth place. Turex and McDowell. Well, right now, these guys are all filling out their race cars. They've not running this much traffic. We talked about the heat in the racetrack. They're all wondering if the, the adjustments that they made on their car are better or worse. And, and it's just it's tough to get comfortable in the first part of this race when you have everything happening on the, on the start and already that anxiety and nerves that come with uh, this particular racetrack and add in all the traffic and everything that's happening. It is just an intense first few laps. Well, already you see the speed in this racetrack. You see 
that clean air and what it does for you. Getting strung out, getting this air, all the downforce you could possibly get on your race car. The leaders had that first. These guys that didn't mired back in traffic still stuck two, three wide. Well, I think Look at this clean air up here. Yeah, and I, I think we're gonna we're gonna see some fall off today. We're gonna see the the handling really come into play. We talked to the drivers and and they told us the tires fall off and the cars really start to get up on top of the racetrack and. So these first few laps are great and everybody's settled in and filling everything out, but it is not going to get better for them behind the wheel. Race the racetrack. I don't think I've heard those words since we were at Darlington last year. Well, you have to settle into a rhythm here and, and you have to be comfortable with with where you're at with your car. Uh, you see all these guys running the bottom of one and two. That is not where they're going to wind up by the time uh, the, this first run is over. I think they're going to be up the racetrack. Larson's already looking around up front through the middle of the racetrack through three and four. But I, I think by the end of the day, especially through one and two, you're going to be up the racetrack and you see Todd Gill end up in that second lane right sides right on those hash marks through the through the corner and that's what the place that has the most grip. Gilland and Ty Dillon battling back there. There's a Chase Elliott 21st with Corey LaJoy. Elliott up three spots since the start. Justin Haley has gained the most spots six since the start of this race. He's 26th. Riding along with seven time champion Jimmy Johnson. Struggling so far this weekend. Been rough. Been around backwards in the wall in practice. Got a long road to hoe today. Yeah, and it's just not an ideal situation for Jimmy Johnson to come in and, and run these races. I think he came to one of the, the hardest racetracks to, to show up and, and run this car. See him starting to downshift there through the through the middle of one and two, but he is learning every lap and it's just going to be a long day for him. 11th and 12th. Truex started ninth. He's dropped two. Hamlin down one from where he started. 11. You see Larson take off and hide. I, I expected that after the, you know, of the five car. But Gibbs, Ty Gibbs, the 54 car, is holding pace with him quite well. They're driving off and separating themselves from third, Christopher Bell. Well, what we're showing right here is Brad Keselowski struggling. See Kyle Busch going by. Um, and, and this is what we talked about at the start of the race and we talked to Brad on the pre race show. He is he is he has lost 10 positions and struggling with the handling of his car and this is what we were wondering. What would these RFK cars do. We talk about Brad Keselowski's record here at Texas but it has not been good to start this race. Well all right who's on the inside of him. Bre uh, Bush right there on the inside. He was also involved in a spin out and hit the wall in practice backup car for Kyle Bush in the eight. 32nd and 33rd. Not good. Kyle Larson with a one second lead on Ty Gibbs, who has a further two and a half on his teammates Christopher Bell. And then Tyler Reddick and Chase Briscoe, the top five after 11 laps in Texas.
16 laps complete in the Auto Trader, Echo Park Automotive 400 in Texas. Pole sitter Kyle Larson minding the gap, one second up on Ty Gibbs, but they are pulling away from the rest of the field. The gap now another three and a third seconds back to Christopher Bell. We talked to a number of drivers competing this weekend about where the preferred line is in the corners here at Texas. I think the preferred groove will still be your normal Texas bottom. Bottom, first half of the race is going to be right around the bottom. By the end of the race, I think you'll see the top be really fast. Probably the bottom for a little while, and then it's going to move a little bit wider. How wide is it going to get? We don't know. Well, I would have thought it was going to be on the bottom, but the top started coming in. Every time we come back to these tracks the next year, they've changed. They've had a, a whole winter. No telling what the asphalt's changed, how it's changed, and what's going for. So I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, no idea. That's that's a that's a great explanation of of everything that we're dealing with today. You see um, Eric Jones there kind of move up and, and he was probably going to run a little bit higher. But right now everything's on the bottom. I, I still say uh, Kyle Larson is going to catch the back of this field and he's going to have to go somewhere besides the bottom. So I think that second groove will come in. Let's check with Larry Mack. Yeah, Mike, Chase Briscoe in the 14 car, he's running fifth right now. And as you've documented, the pace has fallen off almost a second after 20 laps. What Chase Briscoe has started doing now, because the speeds are down, he has started downshifting the fourth, getting into one and two, and then grabbing fifth down the back straight away. Stays in fifth gear all the way through the faster end of three and four, but he definitely started shifting, getting into one about five or six laps ago. Yeah, and once somebody starts doing that, then everybody will start to recognize, okay, I have I have things that I can do different different tools in my car to be able to downshift. Once this second groove gets burned in a little bit, and I don't think I just don't think anybody wants to be the first one up there, but like I say, when, when they start catching lap traffic, they're going to have to do something besides run the bottom. You will quickly be forced to. You have to go whether or not. Can't get mired back in their wake of their, their uh, you know, their draft. It drastically tightens the race car up behind you. That's when you're going to start moving up the racetrack, as you say, Kevin, and using a lot, utilizing that downshift that Larry speaks of. Yeah, we hear Larry talk about a lot of tight race cars on the track, and I think some of that is obviously traffic. I think some of that is everybody anticipating the racetrack probably not having as much grip as it did yesterday. So we'll see these guys start to dial their cars in and do things a little bit differently, but there will be some comers and goers here as we get further into this run. Point taken, Denny Hamlin. He ran that outside. Did you see the momentum, the run he got off of two, running down the back stretch on his teammate Trex Jr. Starting to see the five car, the leader, inch up the racetrack more and more and more in three and four. I think he's consciously starting to set himself up, getting a good uh, feel for the grip level up there as he starts to approach his lap traffic. So the gap first and second has remained very constant at a full second. How far do you need to be behind another car when you can consider yourself to be in clean air here? Yeah, well, you're going to be really the leader is the only one that's going to be in clean air. These cars are, are sensitive, but as we saw last week, you can make your way through traffic if you have a good handling car. And I, this groove is going to widen out, and you're going to have some options here a, as this run goes. So the fall off, the second groove in the racetrack, the downshifting, there's going to be a lot of things that start to be able to uh, show up um, with, with the, the good handling cars and the bad handling cars. Well, and it's not like it's a cakewalk to just drive around in. Those guys are racing for that uh, lead lap material position, and they're going to make it hard on you. They're going to try to make it wide. They're going to try to make you tight behind them, take your air off of your race car, and that's where the challenge becomes. Just because you rolled to their outside doesn't mean they're going to pull up there and just let you go. They're going to block you and force you to do something they're not. Working lap 25, all under green, and pole sitter Kyle Larson has led from the drop of the green flag. The gap back to Ty Gibbs still exactly one second.
31 laps complete in Texas. Kyle Larson has the Xfinity fastest lap of the race so far. Nice to see all three makes represented uh, in that fast five. While we were away, Ryan Blaney moved up to fifth place and Denny Hamlin moved into the top 10. Well, you see that, that fastest lap right there, three tenths better. Kyle Larson, he was like, man, I want all the smoke right here. I'm the guy, three tenths faster than the next guy. That just shows the speed of his car. Well, he's starting to think about this lap traffic as he approaches him. What do I do? Casgarala, who replaced a steering rack after yesterday's practice, will be the first car to go one down as Ross Chastain moves up to 13. Yeah, Martin's struggling with the handling of his car. He's been passed by a few cars now headed the wrong direction and now we're going to see Kyle Larson start to move around in my opinion uh, he's going to go to the bottom right here but eventually he's going to be at a point where he's he's not as much faster and they don't move over for him he's going to have to move around the racetrack well he's going to have a busy month of May with NASCAR and the Indy 500 earlier this year in a relaxed setting Michael Waltrip talked with Kyle Larson about it I've tested twice, once at Indy and then here at Phoenix. You're just feeling the, the speed and the G-forces was crazy, but at the same point, like it didn't feel that different to me um, than our next-gen cars. What are the expectations for the Indy 500? Expectation, I have no clue. I understand how difficult it is and, and how experienced all those drivers are. I would like to just have a nice, clean couple weeks, gain experience, all that, and, and enjoy, enjoy my time. And then try and go to the 600 and whoop ass there. <laughs> Denny Hamlin's making his pit stop under green along with John Hunter Nemechek and Ryan Priest. Now a half dozen more to pit road. Yeah, you know it's gonna bring them all down. Once one does it, they all follow, have to. Danny Hamlin on the move. You know Truex, we saw him backing up. He needs some adjustments. Yeah, and the guys who pitted first, we saw Denny Hamlin come to pit road first. Here comes our leader, Kyle Larson. Jamie? William Byron, the Fives teammate, making his way down pit road as well. Feels like they're pretty even to the cars around him. No big complaints, Regan. Well, the five car of your leader, Kyle Larson, right now, just a little bit tight in turns three and four. That started happening about five laps ago. Well, and a lot of that started happening because he started catching traffic, and you see Tyler Reddick's crew, great shot from the spoiler right there, watching those guys do their work. Well, you saw Gibbs on your pylon. Gibbs and Bell, teammates, stayed out. Bell actually pitted this lap. Gibbs still out there. A little bit difference in strategy. So Ty Gibbs becomes the second leader of this race. Larson led the first 35 laps. Well, and Ty had a huge lead over the, the cars that were behind him, so it's allowing him to run a little bit further, try to have a little bit fresher tires. I don't like this Gibbs staying out. He's mired in traffic. Larson is wide open. Uh -oh. Clean shot ahead. Got a fire, guys. Big time fire on pit road. Uh, looks like a little bit of a gas spill there as one car was leaving. Hold on, this is important. See, Gibbs is wanting to come in. They're ready. He's still on the racetrack. It's going to have to come through that. Probably told him to go around another lap. Yeah, and you're right, Clint. He's losing a ton of time in this traffic. Absolutely. His, his pit stall is just after the pit stall that was on fire. That fire has now been extinguished. They're saying don't throw any sand or anything out there because he needs to get in his pit. This is not going to work out very well for them. If you look over your shoulder, that's in pit road. Look over your shoulder here on the racetrack, and he is in a ton of traffic. And he's got to battle cars that now have fresh tires, yeah. as well as the ones he's trying to and, lap. And you see him trying to protect himself right there to not have Brett Kozlowski get underneath him because he's going to come to pit road right here. Six, seven drivers have yet to pit. Careful. Here he comes. He got her woed up. That's a really hard pit road to come around, especially in the traffic and everything that he had to hold the, the pace. Then all of a sudden you get around the corner and, oh, there it is. All right, that'll hand, get you. that'll hand the lead to Chase Elliott with Gibbs on pit road. Regan. Like Ty Gibbs was good early on with the race car, but as the run went on, he started to develop a free condition. By the end of the run, he was free everywhere on the racetrack, he told us guys. Well, that's what we expected. Exactly what Regan just reported was a, that right rear tire to start to give up and the car start to, slide, start to slide around. You see trouble on the left rear. This is getting, went from bad to worse right there on the pit stop. A long stop for Ty Gibbs. Chase Elliott, the leader. Todd Gilliland, second. Ty Dillon, Austin Hill, Daniel Hemrick, all of whom started outside the top 20. 
and now have the lead without yet making a pit stop. Yeah, and that's really been the Achilles heel of, of a lot of these weeks when that 54 car has been so good to be able to uh, perform on the on pit road like that. We've seen him bite it a couple times and have to battle back all day instead of stay up there in the front for the lead. We saw in the bug there just how much he lost. He was virtually close to Larson within striking distance as they were getting to that traffic before the pit stops. Now it's almost a half a track behind. Well, it was over a second a lap right there. And then you saw all the trouble on the pit stop and it, it really put him behind. So now just Elliott Gilliland Hill and Hemrick remain on the racetrack without having made this first pit stop. Larson up to third and Bell leading the rest of the drivers who've pitted from sixth. Well, look how far Bell is ahead of, you know, I mean, don't mean to keep beating this, but look how far he's ahead of Gibbs, the third place car of Bell, and he wasn't even in sight before this pit road, uh, pit stop, cycle of pit stops. Well, right now, Clint. Yeah, look how far it is. Yeah, it's it's a it's definitely a long ways, and and right now, Chase Elliott is, has stayed on the racetrack and running 30-26, and he's losing about a half a second a lap to Larson. Chase Elliott was 21st before the pit stop cycle began. Been out there for 44 laps, along with Gilliland, Hill, and Hemrick. 15 drivers on the lead lap. Of course, that will cycle once Elliott and Gilliland make those stops. All right, Chase Elliott grinding it out with the lead here, 45 laps in in Texas. Good point. Chase Elliott and Todd Gilliland did not make their pit stop, hoping for a caution. They got one. 
Jimmy Johnson spun coming off turn number four to put us under the first caution flag of the day. Watch the 84. Oh yeah, he's he's sideways before he even came into the camera frame. So uh, just got to be really careful with this car. It's there's a huge bump in the in the middle of three and four down there. When when you run higher up the racetrack, it'll just bounce the car, and all of a sudden it'll be around on those probably on those limiters. Jamie. Yeah, and to your point, I just listened to Jimmy Johnson's radio. He said, I'm just awful through the bumps. It's not bottoming out, but it's just awful up there. And you see what happened there once he yep. hit it. Yeah, and that's you can just almost see the car bounce right there. And that's just experience in this car, not not having the experience in this car. I mean, you know, you know, coming here that you're going to have a tough time running through those bumps because of how rough it is. And it's just going to come out from underneath him. As soon you as he see that you can see it in his body. Watch his helmet bounce. And as soon as it did, unloaded the rear tires of that car and went around it went. And I mean, it, it's it's literally starting over again for for Jimmy Johnson and learning all these things that these guys are doing on a week to week basis. And you think you can go up there and do those types of things, but you can't. It's tough in that in this car up there. Now, in the big picture, Elliott, Gilliland, Hill and Hemrick have not made their pit stop. Uh, that means there's only 18 cars on the lead lap. Alex Bowman, I believe, is going to get the excuse me. Chris Buescher is going to get the free pass and get back on the lead lap. But Elliott and Gilliland did what they hoped to do, trap a number of cars one lap down. Larry, I think this is a perfect thing. I don't think it's just that. I think when they pit right here, you expect some of these guys to have to come with them? I do, because they've got about anywhere from 8 to 10 up to 12 laps on their tires. The only one that has the least amount of tires is Ty Gibbs in that 54 car with about 9 laps. You could see a mixed bag, but to Mike's point, there's only 18 drivers on the lap. We know some's going to come get four. You may see right sides only. We, we've already seen what clean air is worth. Being out front is worth a lot. All right, the pits have not yet opened under this first caution of the day in Texas for Jimmy Johnson's spin. Well, the pits opened and the four drivers who had not yet made a stop came in along with Ryan Blaney, uh, Bubba Wallace, Gilliland, the uh, 34 of McDowell, Chastain, and Truex all pitted. Regan. Well, Mike, a great break for Chase Elliott with that caution coming out, helping him get some track position. Early on, he had no grip with the front of the back of the car, but as the run went on, it continued to get better. By the end of it, he actually liked it, so the balance isn't terrible, maybe just a little bit too tight with the front of the race car. Well, to your point, Elliott did not run his fastest lap of the race until lap 47, very deep in that run. Yeah, and he had some great lap times in, in clean air up there, so he's definitely got a car with the right track position that can compete today. Well, Harry, you said it, all these teams saw the clean air and the importance of it, noted on the nine card, Larson, everybody that's had it is extremely fast. Not very many of them came. Yeah, and Chastain in the one, they came and did right sides only, kind of to my point, trying to buy a little track position. I'm not sure if Truex took tires or did he just come in for fuel and an adjustment? Uh, we'll double check on that. We think he's got a loose wheel, Mike. We think he's got a loose wheel. Oh, goodness. Gonna find out right here. Yeah, they're gonna put tires on it while he's while he's in. But the worst two will restart is 18th. That's how many cars we'll have on the lead lap for the restart. Here's some audio from the 19. Do you have a loose wheel, sorry? 
Yeah, Martin's frustrated because he, you know, he had to pit the second time, so he's going to have to start tailing, tail into the field in order to uh, because he had to pit the second time. He came in with the lap down car, so uh, bad, bad cycle of events. We saw Martin go backwards at the beginning of the race, yes. and, and and now, now he is going to be at the dead back of the field. Bad to worse. Saturday on Fox, the United Football League continues with hard hitting action. The D.C. Defenders battle the undefeated Birmingham Stallions. Or you'll see Michigan battle San Antonio at 7 Eastern Saturday on Fox. Check your local listings. Uh oh. Loose wheel we're told on Ty Gibbs car. Well this is exactly what we talked about earlier Clint. Uh, this 54 team on, on pit road has had trouble in these key moments of of keeping their car on the racetrack in the great track position and all the moments that they've had and now they're back on pit road with a loose wheel. We saw the 19 just come in for a loose wheel so they've definitely definitely had some issues. On a racetrack where track position is hard to come by and a car that can win the race. Exactly. Going to need opportunities much like we saw this last caution of Jimmy Johnson untimely cautions create those opportunities but it might be deep in the uh, the race before we see that. Well right now we just need to make sure that we keep our driver calm. Hey we got a fast race car. We need to do what we have to do to not get our car tore up and, and we'll figure out how to get you up back. up. It's going to take all day to get you back up there but you got a fast car and let's just not tear it up. Coach was not happy with what he saw sitting on that box. Yeah I wouldn't be either. I mean two of two of his teams right there had loose wheels so easy to do not not jumping on the pit crew guys but man there's a lot that can go wrong and, but it, it definitely when you have two of your cars on pit road for a loose wheel right there definitely going to raise the blood pressure a little bit. So it'll be twenty five to go in stage one when we restart. Showing 19 cars on the lead lap, including Busher, who got the free pass. And a bunch of wave arounds getting ready for the restart. Chris Bell got a great start on that outside. Going to be door to door with Lars. Nah, might lose that battle again. Oh, three wide Cindric up out of the groove. Restarts are so tough here Clint because that third lane you don't want to be up there. Um, cars get tight. When you come up off the corner and, and have to be in traffic right there so you got to be really careful with the positioning of the car and, and what you do on the restarts but got to be aggressive. Eighth place here. Blaney and Chastain. Saw Chastain plenty aggressive as you spoke of Kevin. He was three wide getting into one and won that battle on the bottom utilizing that. Preferred groove. Yeah. And we see we see William Byron you see the hood flap right there. See him move down to, to block the run of, of Chase Elliott behind him but he was right on the back bumper of Chase Briscoe. Chastain mm -hmm. ran down to the bottom slid up the racetrack in front of McDowell. Frustration crossover at McDowell. These guys are duking it out. But you have to be aggressive on, on these restarts, Clint, and, and take everything that you can take. Because right now is the best time to pass. So we know Ross Chastain is very aggressive on the restarts, and he's going to do everything he can to, to try to make some ground up in a short amount of time. Well, Chase Briscoe took two on the restart. He restarted seventh, passed Byron. He is up to fifth. Uh, Byron has dropped three since the green flag waved again. It's Hamlin's coming guys. You see him right there looking to the inside of Tyler Reddick for third. He's come a long ways in a short amount of time. This car is very good on the long run. Keep your eyes out for this 11. Well I know track position is really important but you never you never know what your car is going to do on a, on a refire with the with a cycle on the tires. Jamie. 
down. Denny Hamlin qualified 11th, and he was really discouraged about that, and so was his crew chief, Chris Gabart. I talked to Chris this morning. He said, we're bummed because we missed it in qualifying, but don't let that discourage our fans. We are fast. This car has a great balance through one and two, especially. He said, and Denny will figure out three and four once we're in the race, and that's what he's doing as he's going forward. Well, the last time Hamlin started 11th was two weeks ago in Richmond, which he won. Well, the Wallace, Todd Gilliland, that is for 10th place. 60 laps complete in Texas as we take you Fox side by side. Sixty five complete in Texas where on the restart we had thirty two cars on the lead lap with all the drivers that took the wave around that's where we are right now last of those Daniel Suarez who had quite a moment uh, while we were in break there we're watching Chase Elliott who when the caution came out was in the lead he now he's now in seventh spot Ryan Blaney giving chase. Well, that was a good cycle for for Chase Elliott. And we know if he gets a track position, his car can run better. And here's a guy who's probably a little bit frustrated. And Ty Gibbs, who knows he has a car that can compete for the win, and now he is back in the pack, battling to get the track position back. Regan? Well, Kevin, to follow up on Ty Gibbs coming back down pit road, it was not actually a loose wheel. This happened under the green flag stop. The socket off of the gun that puts the tires on and off actually got hung up on the car. It was on the car after the fact. They had to come down and get that socket off for future pit stops, something I have never seen before. It came dis disengaged from the pit gun. Well, it definitely seems like if it's going to happen, it's going to happen to those guys. They've had. And it's after that walk. happened, here is the 54 radio. Ton of laps, ton of time. I know we got a lot of work to do here now. It's going to be tough. Stay in the game, deep breath. We're going to work at it. We're going to chip at it. We'll get back up where we need to be. Car is plenty good enough. Car is plenty good enough. So, got to take care of our stuff one at a time. Take care of your air. Yeah, I love that pep talk because you know the driver's frustrated and, and you know that he just wants to go and do everything he can to get back to the front but you got to you got to be methodical and take your time doing what you need to do to put your car in the right spot to make the passes clean and, and take care of the car you're just the, this 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 stage is over and you just need to get everything you can and put yourself in a good position. Well if anything they have made Chase Elliott's car faster 
Uh, lap 57, he ran his fastest lap of the race, uh, even quicker than the one he ran just prior to the caution flag. So this is picking up for well, engine number nine. His car was fast before that pit stop, Mike, because when he got clean air, I think the biggest thing they did was give him better track position, which automatically will, like you're saying, make that car faster. He's got better track position, and the biggest thing, Clint, on a racetrack like this, he's got more confidence in what he's doing. Hello. Hello, Clint. Oh, I totally agree with you. <laughs> and it's happened, just like you said, it's happened over the course of, of the short tracks. I thought he got really, really solid. And, uh, but what do you what do you say about this guy on the lead right I was, here? I, I'm, I'm so used to you having everything to say. I didn't know what to do right there when you were silent. <laughs> well, it's not very often I agree with you, Kevin. That's what happened, and I, you know. You were stunned. Well, it's just so boring when you agree. Oh, how were the stockyards last night? Oh, my gosh. It was on fire. The place All right. was oh, so that's standing why, on end. That's why you're quiet. You're hungover. No, no, no. Oh. No. Well, oh. I didn't know. It was uh, I just assumed that what a beautiful day down there. So much fun. This area is awesome. It just continues to get. As you see, by, how about Blaney up on the outside? That's what we'd like to see. You just cut me off. Yeah, you were long winded. If you don't know about the stockyards, it's fun, folks. You need to know. Kevin, you probably ought to stay away. Thank you, Clint. Eight laps to go in the stage. And with his success at Texas, third place Denny Hamlin is today's guaranteed fit, sponsored by eBay Motors. Three time winner here, 16 top tens and 33 starts. That's a pretty good fit. Well, he's got a fast car, too. And you look at the lap times, I know he's probably in a little bit cleaner air, but we talked about experience in the pre race show today, and we. We talked about these guys that can take care of their car and adjust to the racetrack and handle a car that's going to slide around the racetrack, find a groove that, that works for them and be able to maneuver through traffic. And Denny Hamlin fits that category. This is going to come down to mistakes on pit road, things like that. Pit road is going to be so important. You put any one of these three cars right here in the lead, they're going to be hard to handle. Ty Gibbs has climbed to 21st, just behind Noah Gregson, about 15 seconds back of the lead. Well, that last lap was just under a tenth of a second slower than the leader, so he's doing a good job. But when you catch these cars, then you're going to lose a little bit of lap time, and you got to maneuver, put your car in a position to make a pass and do something different than the guys in front of you. And, and from everything that I've seen, his car is pretty versatile. You see him up a lane on the racetrack right there, but when these guys are side by side like that through the corner, it just makes that handling even worse. So, um, best thing for him is those cars stacked up because I feel like. He's definitely got a better handling car and maybe an opportunity to get a few of them right here. We're running out of time. Blaney's the one, probably the only one that's going to be able to make a move for position for the coming to the closing ends of this stage. Mind you, only five laps to go. But how about Elliott and Alan Gustafson? That change, that move that they made, staying out, catching a caution flag and making the stop, took them from 21st before the pit stop cycle to the lead and now to sixth place. So that's a 15 spot swing all due to strategy and a little bit of racing luck. Well you, you look sometimes you got to make your own luck by by taking those chances and putting yourself in a position to capitalize on those moments and they they definitely capitalized on it and like I said a minute ago the confidence that Chase Elliott got with those lap times he was running um, I, I feel I feel good about where they are. They definitely made themselves better uh, with the track position that they gained. Tyler Reddick for 3.3 seconds off the lead. And I thought this car would be faster, Mike. I, I really thought that Tyler Reddick was going to be one of the cars to beat today, but he has not shown the speed so far of Larson and Hamlin and uh, Ty Gibbs. Don't be so quick to sell him out on this deal. He is so close. A couple of adjustments, fine tuning of this car might be able to put him right where he needs to be. Again, getting on pit road, making no mistakes, fast pit stop. You put him out front, I think he'll be hard to handle as well. well. And Any and one of those cars in the top five, I think. And here's a car, Christopher Bell, 20 car of Christopher Bell. All the time, we, we sleep on this guy. He's a, he's a car that, that runs fast, runs up front every week, and I, I don't understand why he doesn't get more credit than he does for, for being as competitive as he is, as we see Ryan Blaney go by Chase Elliott. <laughs> Finally. That took him about five laps to get that job done on the final lap of the stage. Perfect timing. 
Tenth place, Bubba Wallace, in uh, poised to get the final stage point there ahead of Ross Chastain. Kyle Larson on mile and a half tracks in the seventh Gen Cup car that we race today. He's about to win his 11th of 33 stages on mile and a halfs with this car. In fact, in the last six races on mile and a half tracks, he's won at least one stage. Come playoff time, going to be handy to have. Kyle Larson from the pole has now led 62 of 80 laps in Texas. Welcome back to Fort Worth, Texas, where Kyle Larson has won stage one, which had only one caution flag during its running for Jimmy Johnson's spin. Let's check with Jamie Little. Well, Mike, every team out here on pit road, they have their own vibe, their own chemistry. Well, I can tell you that the team that has the most fun and are the biggest pranksters is the one for Ross Chastain. Michael Roberts, front tire changer, Hendersonville, North Carolina. Uh, shout out to the family out there. And cheers to all the one fans out there after we win this race. Ken Posga, rear tire changer from Northeast Ohio. Go Browns, Warren Holland High School. I got two lovely kids, GN Roman. Matt Simmons, tire carrier, Hogwarts. 2006, Little League All-Star, fifth grade spelling bee runner up. And Shane Wilson, Jackman. Want to say a special thanks to my wife, Rachel, and my two boys, Keegan and Colby, for letting daddy play in traffic every Sunday. Also, want to dispute John Bernal with the sexiest bald man on pit road? There's no way you've never met Matt Simmons. Brooke Davenport, Fueler, lactose intolerant, Catholic University grad, <laughs> father to Henry. We have created a new competition. <laughs> Imagine a bunch of competitors creating a competition. That was awesome. <laughs> How about that? Well, <laughs> there it is. Spelling bee runner up. Something we can't say. One of those fellows was from Hogwarts? Uh, there's Phil Surgeon from Vermont. Uh, four wins with Ross Chastain. 
And uh, don't forget their spotter up on the roof, Brandon McReynolds. That's fun, being able to highlight those guys, the job they do every pit stop, four tires full of fuel. It's just, it's still, even when you, it's my favorite thing to do is take somebody down and show them a pit stop in NASCAR. It always just blows people away. Well, Kyle Larson has now led over 500 laps this season. The most he's ever led in the first nine races of any season. He will lead Christopher Bell, Denny Hamlin, Tyler Reddick, Chase Briscoe, and the rest of the lead lap cars on to pit road. Maybe not all of them are stopping. Jamie. Denny Hamlin peels off in third. He's up seven spots since the start of the race, saying he's struggling to get it turned in three and four. He has to get off throttle too early. Air pressure adjustment and four. Ross Chastain's team, you just met the boys going over the wall right now. He's a little bit looser over the bumps. Needs a little bit of help there, Regan. Christopher Bell in the 20 car needs to be a little bit freer in turns three and four, especially the wind is pushing him too tight at that end of the racetrack. And Kyle Larson, your leader, a little bit tight in three and four, but edgy in one and two. Larson comes off second to Martin Truex. Yes, found that track position back, boys. Opportunity presents itself, take advantage. Well, the other opportunity is the 12 car of Ryan Blaney still on the track. Yeah, Blaney did not pit. As Coach Gibbs mentioned during the invocation, a sad day for those of us who've been a long time in NASCAR and followed the Labonte family. Of course, Bobby in the Hall of Fame, Terry Labonte, double champion, and their dad, Bob, championship winning car owner in the Bush Series and crew chief, passed away this week.
Saturday on FS1, two iconic teams go head to head. The Mets take on Mookie Betts, Otani, and the Dodgers, 3 Eastern on FS1 Saturday. Differing strategies at stage end. Some drivers went for stage points. And there's how they were awarded. But four drivers on your pylon on the left stayed out and did not pit. Blaney, Hill, Busher, and Gibbs. Couple of issues on pit road. Todd Gill, that's Todd Gilliland's tire in Brad Keselowski's pit. Definitely impeding their pit. That will be a penalty. Yep, equipment interference. And there's the 71 Zane Smith removing equipment. Yeah, you definitely can't take the gas can with you. Nope. So in addition to the four that did not stop, Martin Truex took two tires and was the first off pit road. Here's some Brad Keselowski radio. I'm not going to run three wide for 30th here at lap 70. Get busted for no reason. I'm going to tear him up here eventually. I don't know when, but the track's too slick to get away with that stuff. Yeah, the only three wide you need to be doing is if you get on the way to the bottom. Yeah, three wide on the bottom, I'll take. The three wide on the top here, we're going to be in the feds. Well, that lets you know where Brad's car is and how it feels. And and he's had a tough start to the race. Uh, he's 28th right now after the pit stop. So definitely treacherous out there for some cars. Now Chase Briscoe came in fifth, but came out, uh, well, he's 16th. So that means he came out about 12th, an uncharacteristic long stop for the 14. Well, who was the benefactors? Gibbs and Truex both had bad pit stops, needed an opportunity to get back into it. That's exactly what they got with that caution right there. Well, we're going to find out how good their cars are with those old tires. And we're going to find out how good Kyle Larson's car is on the new tires if he can make it through traffic. Here we go. We're back under green. Kyle Busch got the free pass at the end of stage one. So we restart with 33 lead lap cars. Larson's five, the first car with four tires. Remember Blaney, Hill, Gibbs, Busher did not stop. How about Austin Hill in second place? He's been tearing up the Xfinity series and he's only going to make a, a handful of cup starts this year in a third. Richard Childress racing entry, crew chief to buy Keith Rodden. This entry today marks the 3,303rd Cup Series start for Richard Childress Racing since 1969. Carrying a flag right now for that organization as well. Crossover move by Bell looking to the inside of Truex. Thought better of it. Probably the right move. Well, we see Martin Truex going backwards right there. The Strategy that they had chosen has lost. He's lost a few spots here on this restart. See a huge head of steam by William Byron right there. Byron inside a bell. That's for ninth place with McDowell. And then Chastain on the outside. You see William Byron go back down to to block the progress of Christopher Bell right there, and that shows you how important that was. A, that was a pretty tight play right there. Well, worked him over for a lap and a half to make the pass, and then he probably slid up in front of him a little bit in a bold move off a of two, lose a little bit of momentum, have to be aggressive to make sure you sustain the track position. But Larson to the outside of Hill, second place. Larson on fresh tires. Hill, one of those that did not stop under this caution. Well, now we're going to see how fast Kyle Larson's car is. We see Ryan Blaney, Blaney running laps that are pretty good, you know, for his his track position and everything that he gained to show the speed in his car. But Kyle Larson's been the class of the field so far today. Well, you can watch his progress on the scoring pylon. When Larson passed Hill, he was 1.5 seconds back of Blaney. You see that number growing smaller. 
Hamlin for sixth, Reddick for tenth. I can't wait for the end of this race and the strategy game to pick up. I mean, obviously, you'll need an untimely caution for it to shake things up, but that's exactly what we see, you know, time and time again with these mile and a half tracks, Kevin, is, is these opportunities as we speak of. We've already seen it today twice. Well, we, we, we see Ty Gibbs there and Austin Hill, Denny Hamlin going past Ty Gibbs, and, and those guys uh, in played the track position game, but I think these tires are obviously more important than the track position at this particular point. Well I think they'll prevail again. You know you get down to the ending stages of this race depending on the laps depending on the laps you already had on your tires. You may be forced to have to pit fuel. You know there's so many scenarios that come into this might play right into it. Sometimes luck is a part of strategy. Yeah, we had two tires on the 19 of, of Martin Truex and his car has steadily just gone backwards. Hill giving way to Gibbs, neither of whom stopped. And Bubba Wallace in the 23, under fire from Briscoe, had a bad pit stop. Yeah. Oh, Stenhouse shoots past. Jumped and so cushion. is Gregson. Yeah. Got a little too high. Yeah, you, you get out of that super black groove, it gets really slick above that. Austin Hill's going to have to be careful three wide on the outside. You heard Keselowski say that's no man's land. Had to lift quite a bit. They're sacking up behind him. Oh man. Wow. Chastain was trying to make it three wide. See the front of Ross's car take off there when he's tucked up right behind Christopher Bell. But you see Ross put a lot of pressure trying to make make a decision uh, or find a hole that he that he couldn't find. And now it's, he didn't want to lose momentum. So this didn't happen. And he had to deal with Michael McDowell. There's not a needle big enough to shove a watermelon through in that situation. Uh, there that hole just just disappeared on him by the time he got there. Ninety eight laps complete Ryan Blaney now with Kyle Larson in a hot pursuit for the lead. Big crash on the front straightaway in Texas. We are back under caution. John Hunter Nemechek. Alex Bowman, Christopher Bell, big damage on the rear of his car. I looked up and saw Bell's car backwards in the wall. Oh, you see the same thing that happened to Jimmy Johnson earlier. I promise you, Christopher Bell went over that bump in the high groove. The back of the car stepped out on him, caused a chain reaction behind him. That bump in, in turns three and four, you have to depends on your car as to how you have to go over that bump. But if the car is not pointed. Ooh, see John Hunter come across the nose of Alex Bowman. I think Bowman got checked up. As you said, it stacked up behind him. He got checked up and ran over from behind. And here come Nima check sliding in later. This is on board the 48. I'm an ally cam. Very easy right to the track. Hang on. Big damage to that car. Christopher Bell was 10th. Bowman was 19th. Nemechek 22nd. It's a terrible feeling, Kevin, just along for the ride. Checked up, got ran over. 
I think he just lost it, Clint. There was nobody behind him. Well, let's watch uh, Brad Kozlowski drive right through it from the uh, buildsubmarines.com cam. Watch your move in the middle. He's going high, go high, go high, Brad, go high, go high, go high, go high. You're good. TJ Majors, the spotter. Yeah, and you could see right there, it looked like a car came across the, the nose of yeah. the 48 car of Alex Bowman, and that's really what spun him out. Yeah, he was trying to stay down off of him, and they kept coming down further and further, trying to avoid the contact with the cars ahead and spun Bowman around. Another caution, another opportunity. So Bell 12th in the point standings, Bowman 13th. Larry, what do you expect is going to happen under this caution? Well, we know we have a mixed bag of strategy out on the racetrack right now, but I think everybody comes to pit road right here because you can make it to the end of stage two, but it's going to be busy because I think you're going to have everything maybe from fuel only, right sides, four tires. It's going to be all over the place. Well, this, this could work out for Ty Gibbs, Martin Truex, some of those guys that had some strategy, Chris Buescher. Well, and Ryan Blaney, who did not pit at the end of stage one, holds the lead as they come on to pit road. That's right. Jamie. Well, Danny Hamlin said, I need a little bit better turn in three and four. I'd rather come in now and just work on it, make a small adjustment. They'll do just that. 24, William Byron, Rudy Fugel asked him if he had any loose moments. He said, nope, I'm good. It's going to be right tires only. Regan. 12 car Ryan Blaney likes the adjustments that they've been making. They've been gaining on the stability of the car, in particular on the exit. He's told that they are going to have to count on fuel, so he's going to have to wait on that in the five car. Kyle Larson, his car is good. Quick two tire stop by Hamlin. And Larson leads him off pit road. And number one pit stall, important. Christopher Bell's spin into the wall in turn four. Alex Bowman spins and gets collected by John Hunter Nemechek.
This is Randy, ladies and gentlemen. Tell me about it. How many years have you been coming here? Been uh, coming here 27 years. That's why you get dubbed the mayor, right? That's right. So nobody's up? Well, yeah, we've been partying all night. Somebody's got to get up and cook breakfast. Who's going to win today? Uh, Casey Kane. What's it been since 2018? My man Casey Kane ain't been on a racetrack. <laughs> Randy guy. was running a little rough. His idol was a little off this morning when he woke up. There's uh, Alex Bowman going to the garage where he will join Austin Hill, who had pulled in a lap before with steering problems. Here's some William Byron radio. Sorry, saw that coming. I just wanted you to try to get him to check, but it's the wrong guy to check. Yeah, he was too far up a lot. He was on my door. He would have wrecked you, so you're fine. Lost still spots there, but it is what it is. P9, let's go to the front. We'll work on it again. A couple of close calls here. Uh, exiting the pits, that's Tyler Reddick. And here comes Bubba Wallace. Boom. Pops him out into traffic just as... Uh, Christopher Bell was trying to get into his pit. Well, that's what that's what they're talking about on the William Byron radio. He had to check up for Christopher Bell right there and lost a couple spots. He had nowhere to go. Man, Truex, talk about capitalizing on other people's behalf. These cautions have really put him right back in the play. So Larson was the first off pit road, but Todd Gilliland did not pit. Another contrary strategy. Justin Haley gets the free pass. And Chris Busher will start out back for equipment interference on his pit stop. We're back under green. Way up out of the groove for Bubba Wallace. Ty Gibbs losing a lot of track position. Up the hill and to the back. Larson, Hamlin, Truex make quick work of Gilliland. Chastain up for fourth now. I like what I see out of that 11 car. Able to run that top groove really well. Big block for Truex, move back down. Locked him getting into three. I like the fact that Denny Hamlin can run that second groove on both ends as an option. We, we've seen turns three and four that that bump in the second groove be some issues for a couple cars now. A lot of aggression fourth on back Chastain in the one McDowell in the thirty three trying to muscle their way through traffic. Blaney restarted ninth. He's picked up two. Two back, no run, no run at all. Let me see on board the Hunt Brothers Pizza camera right here, and Joey Logano. They've they've had a. They're currently 12th, but um, haven't heard much out of this car today, Clint. No, I did see it or hear a downshift. Back into fifth gear as you hear he go down the back straightaway, stay wide open. Oh, getting past again. Yeah, you saw him move down to try to block right there. See him looking in rear view mirror. Who else is coming? Well, that's, what happens. Up? that's what happens here. You lose the momentum. You get passed by one car, you get out of the groove, and the next thing you know, you're you're out of position for the next corner, and then these guys get a run on you as you're side by side, and then you're out of groove for out of position for the next corner, and it just seems to snowball as you go along. Blaney for sixth. Blaney's a grinder, isn't he? He just figures it out. Out of all the Fords, last year's champ, there's a reason he's a champ. Might not be there at the beginning of these things, but by the time the pay window opens, you look over at 12 cars a factor. Yeah, and those guys are really good about adjusting on their car. You saw that at the championship race. We've seen it a few times this year. They get to the start of these races and they're not very good. And next thing you know, they get a couple of adjustments on their car and they're in position at the end. Blaney restarted ninth. He's up to sixth. He's given Denny Hamlin fits. I think the 11 car is quite a bit better than him. It just shows you catching them is one thing, passing them is the other. Trying to get out of that wake and a move to the outside, get some momentum built up and keep the throttle down or even do a crossover as he looks maybe to the inside. 
They are two drivers who have just run their fastest lap in this race. The others being Gilliland, Chastain, Elliott, and Logano. So these adjustments are working. Some of these cars are gaining speed. Yeah, and we've got a little bit of cloud cover starting to roll into the racetrack. You see it starting to cover different sections of, of this racetrack. And that is Martin Truex is out of the groove. Way up out of the groove. Hold yeah. on to it. And it is once you get out of the groove in the middle of the corner, it's like ice. Oh, Speaking of out of the groove, Josevar, see Bush around there. This is the second time I've seen this for Josevar. He was in trouble a few laps ago getting in at one. He got flat. We'll need to come first time. Sure, they're all flat. Well, they're not flat yet. So the rookie brings out the fourth caution of the day. He was running 23rd. That was way before the corner, Kevin. Wow. Might got some help there. He was loose really, really early. I'll have to see a better angle of it, but Kyle Busch was close to the rear end of that car. That was Chris Busher's view in the Ford Performance Cam. Fourth caution on the day, Josevar has made it back to pit road. Yeah, one thing we probably need to, to pick up on there and, and uh, explain to everybody is you see Josevar in his pit stall, but uh, Ty Gibbs and Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace got loose on that restart, got up into Gibbs, and they're 23rd and 25th right now if you're wondering where they went. That's what happened. The leaders stay out. We'll take a break at 114 laps complete. And Kyle Larson in the lead in Texas. Under caution, Kyle Larson hit the radio, says, feels like I have a flat tire. No. Not good. You got a flat tire. You also have no tire. That Lugnut comes off. That is, a, that is a massive, massive moment in this race, Clint. Wow. 
That'll be a two lap penalty. And likely suspensions in order. Yeah, what? Well. Man, how? How? After all those laps, it just comes off, Kevin? Yeah, I, I, I don't really know how to explain that, Clint. It, it um, you know, typically it would feel like the tire was moving around, like the car was skewing out, and I could see why he would think that he had a flat tire with that wheel moving around on the Well, let's the explain that. Let's dive into it a little bit. Okay, when the tire goes in, you saw the tire go flat and then the wheel come off. When the lug nut comes off, it moves that tire out and the caliper will actually grind a hole in that uh, a groove in the aluminum wheel. That will flatten the tire, let the air out of it. And then all of a sudden, as soon as that came out, it creates a void and the wheel comes off. single lug nut that holds the wheel on the seventh generation car with the retainer to and that retainer designed to keep that uh, nut from backing off but sometimes things happen well obviously the setback with the wheel coming off is a big thing but as Larry told us a two lap penalty for the car that's been the heat all day long that's well, what that one is hard to overcome and before we go back green and probably drug a whole bunch of that uh, underneath of that Diffuser. car off. yeah ready for the restart we're back to green Kyle Larson being held for two laps yeah you see him over there on pit road sitting see Chase Elliott put him three wide on the bottom of the racetrack, puts those guys on the outside in a tough position. Gained a couple spots right there. Going to get back up in front of Michael McDowell and clear him and Denny Hamlin. Martin Truex going at it for the lead. Denny Hamlin prevails right there into turn three. Alex Bowman out of race, checked and released at the care center. Austin Hill out with steering issues, and now Larson is released two laps down plus distance. Todd Gilliland in the mix there that white and yellow car and blue has not been to pit road since lap 85 everybody he's racing with was uh, in the pits at lap 103. Well he's done, done a great job of managing the position the track position and everything that they've given him and keeping it so great call by those guys and obviously their car is is not too bad today. Oh. Trouble car around Josh Berry turn two. Calamity corner. This caution at lap 121 will be the fifth of the day. It looks okay. Keep it rolling here. Hmm. Barry was 12th. Yeah, and you see the deck lid and the bumper caved in on the back of that car of Josh Barry. The free pass will put Jimmy Johnson back to the lead lap. And watch the four. Oh. Contact there with Busher. Yeah, Stenhouse. The, that was Stenhouse. Oh, excuse me, Stenhouse. Yeah. yeah, I think Stenhouse moved down on him and put him in a bad spot. Yeah, and it just kind of knocked the knocked the front end out from underneath it. And then the next thing you know, the back's coming around. I don't know if he got cleared or not, but he wasn't clear. He moved to the bottom, took that line away from him, and away it went. Yeah, and you see that car spinning, but that started when the 47 came across the nose of the four and hit the front. Next view from the Toyota cam of uh, Eric Jones. Yeah, pretty hard left, right off, right on the nose of Josh Berry. Loose in front of you, see him. You dig it? Not clear. And spinning right in front of two of his uh, Stuart Haas teammates there. Yeah, and you heard the High Plains drifter of Rick Corelli there on the radio with Eric Jones sneaking by that accident. So if this puts Jimmy Johnson back to the lead lap, we will have only Christopher Bell one lap down, Kaz Gralla and Kyle Larson two laps down. Next Sunday, we're back on Fox at the fastest speedway on earth.
Talladega. Pre-race show kicks things off at 2 Eastern, and the green flag flies at 3 next Sunday on Fox. Well, I promise you that guy right there, Ryan Blaney, will be hard to deal with next week at Talladega. And next week is a race that there's a lot of guys like Joey Logano. I was going to say, so yeah. her guy. Joey Logano, yeah. <laughs> Ryan Blaney, all those Fords are licking their chops next week, knowing that they better win. Brad Keselowski told us that in a pre-race. They know where their strong suits are on those super speedways. Cannot wait to get to Talladega. I can't believe all that's transpired today already. Texas Motor Speedway. I mean, it's been just one thing after another for these teams. Kid is not happy. What happened to my guys? Two laps down, and we were leading, Mom. So, Larry, we were just on pit road, what, uh, 19 laps ago? Yeah, I just don't know if I see anybody up front pitting, but I was questioning Ron Burgundy's strategy with Todd Gillen in that 38 because they pitted essentially with 80 laps to go. Remember, the fuel window was around 70 laps, but we are up to about 15 or 16 caution laps since he last pitted. So maybe they're going to stretch this thing out and try to make it to the end of the stage, Mike. Wow. Another contrary strategy for that 38 team. Kyle Larson loses a wheel after leading 77 laps. He is two laps down. Then this, Josh Berry around. Getting ready for the restart in Texas. 124 laps complete. About halfway through stage number two. Toyota's up front, Hamlin, Truex, Reddick. Then Gilliland's Ford, which did not pit again. Chastain, Blaney, Elliott, McDowell. Byron and Briscoe in the top 10 spots. We have 33 cars on the lead lap, counting Jimmy Johnson, who got the free pass. Sun-drenched crowd here in Texas watches them take the green.
Last time we saw those two restart side by side at the front was Richmond. End of the race. We all know how that turned out. Well, it looked exactly wow, the look same. Look at Chastain. We saw Ross Chastain on all these restarts be very aggressive, gain a couple spots, and then kind of settle in. And this one. Oh, Whoa, look out. Tight. Whoa, Still he's tight. in trouble. Might have been a little contact there. Oh, there was for sure. That aggression went too far that time, Kevin. Chastain yeah. had to get off in there really hard, aggressive, lifted out of the gas, was loose, slid up into Reddick, cost Reddick a lot of spots. Yeah, and what will happen right there in the middle of one and two, the, the, the front of the car will take off, and as that corner goes to the exit, it gets really flat on the exit of the corner, and you really can't stop it. And unfortunately for Tyler Reddick, he was the one on the outside of Ross Chastain and really stopped Ross from going up the racetrack, but it didn't work out for Reddick as well. So Reddick settles in seven after restarting third. Well, make that eight. Here comes Chase Elliott on the, on the bottom. He shouldn't be happy about that. It cost him a lot of spots, and it really wasn't on his doing. He didn't do anything wrong there. Track position's hard to come by. He slowly, methodically got it. Talking oh. about Tyler Reddick and got it taken from him. All right, so you're Reddick. You're mad. How do you rebound in the moment and get back to the task at hand? Well, you have to. You just got to get back to work because you were down and out and in a bad way. You got, uh, you know, marbles on your tires. You're out of the groove. You lost your momentum. You got to get it settled in as fast as possible. And your spotter helping you do that, get back in line. And, ooh, they're close. I think he, I think they touched right there, Kevin. Yeah, Chase Elliott just trying to stop the momentum of Tyler Reddick. And once again, it did stop the momentum and he had to check up and Chase Elliott went on by. Here's how this all all started. Yeah. So Chastain really drove it off in the corner aggressively, got in the wake of Truex in front of him, slid up the racetrack when he lost his nose, pushed Reddick up. But watch this one. Yeah, Chase trying to break that momentum of Tyler running the top. And I think he might have touched Did the wall. Red, I think Reddick hit the yeah. wall on the touched, outside. Touched the wall right there, checked him up a little bit, and lost another spot. Sure did. And I think that might be some of that, what you were talking about. You got to settle back in so Man. you don't make it worse. Still getting oh, blocked. Yeah. Big block right there. Yeah, and I don't think he's happy with, with Chase Elliott and the way that he side drafted him down the front straightaway. I don't think Chase did anything wrong, but I don't think Tyler appreciated it. Now he's lost a couple more spots, so. Here comes Logano for ninth. Well, anytime you hit the wall with that right rear, we've seen it so many times over the years with this race car. You take a chance of bending that toe link and digging yourself a deeper hole. Well, Chastain was on the way to the front. He's now challenging Truex for second. Well, we expected Ross Chastain to run well today. He's done his work on the on the restarts, keeping himself in position. This has been a great racetrack for him. He was runner up here last year. Jamie. You're exactly right, Kevin. It's been a great place for them. I know this team was looking forward to coming here today. Up nine spots. Make that 10 as he gets around. Martin Truex Jr. But yesterday I interviewed him during practice. One of those drivers that was visibly shaking about how edgy these cars were around this racetrack. They were able to tighten up that car so it was a little more comfortable for this race. They've been adjusting on it with wedge and air pressure, but right now still a little too tight for his liking, but obviously going in the right direction. Yeah, well, he shakes a lot. He makes himself shake, but he does it. He does it by keeping the gas pedal down and hanging and everything out there that he's that he's got on qualifying days and practice and pretty much every lap. Uh, he that, makes that some of his drugs. competitors shake too. Yeah. <laughs> Bubba Wallace to the inside of Chris Buescher for 21st. Remember Kyle Larson the five two laps down there. Regan. Well, Mike, you see Michael McDowell passing for fourth, but going by his teammate right there. What a good run for this 34 team right now. Really in the race, a little bit tight in traffic. The last report to the team, though, is that he really likes the car. The further forward he gets, the better it gets, and they needed a good run after a tough few weeks. Well, we see three Fords right there in a row, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and that's that's the question that we had coming into the day is another mile and a half racetrack. What are these Fords going to look like? This is what the dark horse was. It was designed to be better. Uh, it, it has not been better so far. These guys have had some time to work on them since the last mile and a half racetrack. And Ryan Blaney's been up there and doing pretty good. But now we see McDowell, 
uh, Gill and, and Blaney right up there. Well, when you're off a little bit on speed, what can you do? Not make mistakes, and that's exactly what they've done. Capitalize on other people's mistakes, got that track position that is so important, and taking advantage of it. 29 to go in stage two. Bunch of uh, Ross Chess. Is that Ricky Bobby? For some reasonable facsimile. Hamlin leading Chastain. This is Josh Berry spinning in turn two, impacting the wall. And the car is the worst for it. We are 138 laps into the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. You know, Dr. Phil rode uh, in the pace car. He was the honorary pace car driver today. I think that four team's going to need an intervention. Yeah, it's been a tough start. We saw him run, run well at, uh, at Bristol and Richmond. Made some mistakes on pit road and, and today. Just a uh, tough couple couple of sequences right there. Well, all right, so what's this do? Gives Bell the lucky dog, right? We still have Larson two laps down. That puts him in the next guy to be able to get a lucky dog and get that lap back. That's something to keep an eye. He can still make his way back into this race. Two lap down is hard to come by, right? Hard to get back from that. But he's the only one after Bell that was a lap down. Well, you saw Chris Gabehart up on top of Denny Hamlin's box, and this has become a crew chief's chess match at this point. Well, Chastain stayed out. Jamie. Yeah, different, differing opinions here, and you guys called it. Chris Gabehart on top of the box saying, all right, let's, let's bring it down. Denny says he's fine, doesn't really need any adjustments, Regan. The 12th car, Ryan Blaney, decides to pit right here. Couldn't really tell his crew chief, Jonathan Hassler, what to do with the car because of the old tires and dirty air that he was in, so that, he was in that run, so they're just going to do four tires. And a bunch of cars stay out. And there's Ty Gibbs, the first one off pit road with a big game. We'll sort it all out for you when we come back.
there's been some strange things that have happened to you at this track as well. I think of the parachuter who damaged your car yeah. before the race. This was 2012. What do you remember about this whole thing? Well, I remember <laughs> going to, to uh, driver intros and, and then I get to my car and there's no car. And I'm like, where's my car? Well, <laughs> where's my car? That guy's sandbag on the bottom of his flag just completely demolished the left side of my car. So they had to go weld the door back on my car before the race. So uh, wow. my car was in the garage uh, getting repaired. They actually delayed the start of the race so that we could fix our car. You've had an interesting career here. We, we, we definitely have had, not just here, it seems like everywhere. Well. The more we do... Uh, the podcast and the happy hour podcast on on Tuesdays and Thursdays the more I remember about all the crazy <laughs> things that have happening so um, we had some we had some issues today in our landings looks like but I got my door knocked in that day yeah. from the sandbag heavy holding. winds today um, those parachutists did a did a great job anytime you jump out of an airplane and <laughs> your heart's still beating when you're done I'd say that's a great landing we've got a uh, Brett, Brett Veach on the on the show this week, GM of the Kansas City Chiefs. Texas has been a good track. Once we finally broke through, we won a few of them, but it was always a place in the Xfinity car and the trucks that we expected to win. Three won. cup wins, five Xfinity wins, and a truck win. So yeah, we talked about that truck win this week. That was the that was the year that Kyle Busch wiped out Hornaday under the caution, got suspended on Sunday. Sent my man Josh down there to take care of Kyle Busch. They <laughs> pulled him jail. out, pulling him out of the trailer, <laughs> trying to beat up Kyle Busch, and had to go get him out of the out of the hauler afterwards. To they took his hard card. So been a neat place. All right, couple of uh, penalties, equipment interference for Daniel Suarez and Corey LaJoy driving through too many boxes on exit. So the first five drivers have been out there since lap 103. Leading by Chastain, the next three pitted at lap 115. And from Ty Gibbs in ninth on back, everybody just came off pit road. So here we go. Patiently aggressive for some of these leaders. Keep an eye on Hamlin back there. Gibbs, a lot of cars in front of him stayed out. Oh, you see some big contact with Harrison Burton and Ty Gibbs there. I can't tell who's in front of Harrison but that's Brad Kozlowski he did not go and still not going and they checked that whole lineup with some big contact. Kozlowski is the last of the drivers who have not been to pit road since lap 103. Oh, oh McDowell. No. Hard hit for Michael McDowell. Is that that bump you were talking about Kevin? It's the car has to be pointed straight in those bumps especially on low tires. We got a lot of cars coming down pit road. Big contact for Michael McDowell. It was right down on the door of Chastain racing hard, trying to keep that track position on the outside, staying door to door. And all those cars that came down pit road did so to avoid the accident. And uh, they are allowed to do that without penalty as long as they cautiously reduce their speed as they're coming down the pit lane. You know who's a benefactor of that? The five uh, car. Well, he's going to get one lap back. He's still got a, another one to go. This, I don't know if he spun out over the bump right there, but. This lap is a hard lap to get back. Yes, you are right about you that. You get back from two laps down, you can make the rest of it up. It looked to me at first glance, let's just, before I open my mouth, watch. Hard to tell. Yeah. I, it was definitely in the vicinity of that bump. Regardless, thing got loose on the outside, trying to hold position on him. Well, we'll get a second angle here. Two very aggressive drivers. You see that car start to bounce. It's before yep. the bump. I think it was wiggling, yeah, just yeah. to say. It's definitely rougher, a little bit rougher in the second groove all the way through the groove. There's one big bump about three quarters of the way through, but it's definitely going to be rougher. But you could see Michael McDowell's car start to bounce, and that really worked the back of that car free. And here's what Michael McDowell had to say. Sorry, boys. Just got in that bump, and it took off. Well, there you go. So no contact. Meanwhile, Josh Berry has been released from the care center. He brought out the last caution on which Christopher Bell got his lap back. So this time, the first car that is laps down is Kyle Larson, who will get one of his two laps back. Carnage. Well, all these guys tell us in pre-race, Kevin, this place is treacherous. You have to be respectful of it, have to be careful. Grip level is down. 
Guys are getting desperate on these restarts, trying to go for it. Track position's hard to come by. Old tires, new tires, a lot of different scenarios out here. Well, and, and to Michael McDowell's wreck right here, it's like what Larry talked about earlier with those bump stops. You run them as close as possible, and when you run that second groove down there, it, it starts to go over those bumps a little bit harder, and when it does that, it starts to hit those hit those stops harder and allows the makes the car loose. So the AMR safety team and NASCAR officials, uh, they're talking with Michael McDowell and encourage him to climb out once everything is disconnected. Yeah, he's tried to get through the opening on pit road, and his car has... Uh, only one tire that looks like it's pointed in the right direction, so it won't, can't steer it, so they're going to tow him through the opening. So Kyle Larson, even though the two laps that he lost were the result of a penalty, he is now, having served that penalty, eligible for the free pass and gets one of his back as Michael McDowell goes around and into the wall in Texas. Michael McDowell in the 34 has the car get away from him. And away he goes. His string of three top 20 finishes in a row here in Texas. It looks like we'll end today. Well, it's just what Larry talked about to start the race today. Those bump stops in the back of that car. Michael McDowell just found him and you, you heard him talk on the on the radio about hitting the bump and the and the stops bottom out and like Clint and I were talking during the break, he had probably not adjusted his car to run the pace that he was running to lead the race and probably hasn't run up the racetrack like that and definitely hasn't run up there running as fast as he just ran. But those hit that bump and those stops bottom out and the back of the car is coming around. Yeah, the pace has a lot to do with that. The faster that thing goes, obviously pushes it down more and more into that danger zone of botting that car out. You hit a bump like that at that pace. Way she goes. And it's a real balancing act at this racetrack. We, we touched on it at the beginning of the race. As you see Kyle Larson get this lap back, get closer to being back in the game. But it's a balancing act because of how flat turns one and two are here at Texas. Then you get down to three and four where all the load is, all the bumps are, and you want to set it as close as possible down there. But with what these guys guessed the pace to be today, they set their their heights and their loads and, and everything on what they, what they think. And uh, just a little bit too much probably for Michael McDowell. Uh, to be off and, and hit those bumps and, and spin the car out with those with those stops bottoming out. 
Corey LaJoy, the only lead lap car to stop uh, as pit road opens. Jamie? Well, Denny Hamlin opted to come in that last caution there. Chris, you called him in. You guys gave up some valuable track position there. How do you envision this playing out strategy-wise? <laughs> Well, it was it was really straight up with us in the lead there. If it went green to the stage, I felt great about it. And of course, that caution fell at exactly the right time to bring literally the whole field back into the race. So <laughs> we've got to play a little magic up here, and it depends on when the cautions and how the cautions fall and all that. But the key is we got a really fast car and a fast driver, and those are two key ingredients to win in the race. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thank you. Well, his driver, Denny Hamlin, is the only driver to lead every race so far this season. And today, Hamlin's 22 laps led are the most he has led here since he won in 2019. Saturday on Fox, the United Football League continues with hard-hitting action. D.C. battles undefeated Birmingham, or you'll see Michigan against San Antonio. Kickoff at 7 Eastern on Fox. Check local listings. Well, we've noted that Ross Chastain being very Whoa. aggressive. Whoa. Hey, hey, that's a great shirt. Did you see Did you that guy's see shirt? That, shirt? that gray shirt, it said flux capacitor let's, on it. Let's not, let's not get too far past that shirt. Oh, you mean the blue shirt? Yeah, that one. Okay, right that there. shirt. <laughs> well, what I am seeing is Ross Chastain being very aggressive. You know who's on his outside? Another very aggressive race car driver. Watch this. Chastain, Stenhouse, and Jones. And Keslowski have not been to pit road since lap 103. This could get big. Chase Briscoe way up high. Three wide. Tight, tight, clear. Outback 23, outside. Our Toyota spoiler cam on board Eric Jones, racing Stenhouse for second. Guys, these are the, these are the moments I do not miss. These are the most hectic moments of, of these races all year, but really, really hectic here at Texas Motor Speedway because it's so easy for the front of the car to take off. At the exit of turn two, you have to be on top of your game to anticipate what your car is going to do and try to position yourself in the right spot. So easy to get in trouble right here, Clint. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's all aero dependent. Ooh. You cross the wake the wrong way in front of a car. We saw it with Chastain slid up into Reddick. Most of it down here in one and two. Brad Keselowski trying to hold on to a top six spot. That's Carson Hosevar alongside. Yeah, and it wasn't long ago we were talking about Carson Hosevar spun around off the front bumper of Kyle Busch, and now here he is running sixth. Now behind these two, Denny Hamlin is the first car on new tires. He and Chase Briscoe trying to come to the front, and looks like Hamlin lost a couple of spots right there. It's so hard to put yourself like we talked in the right position. If you get in the wrong spot, somebody gets checked up, you can lose two, three, four spots in the blink of an eye. Well, the business ends one and two. In my opinion, watching this racing, you make the passes in one and two, set them up in three and four. Treacherous off of four with that bump. All these guys having trouble getting to the outside, bottom of the car out and spinning out. But we've also seen these guys take that dive bomb to the bottom, lose their nose, slide up into the car on the outside. A lot of passes being made in one and two. Yeah, and you see Denny Hamlin go underneath uh, Tyler Reddick right there and get all the way beside Ty Gibbs. Gain two spots in one corner. Koslowski Stenhouse both on equal tires as far as when they were last changed. Racing for fourth. Now Kyle Larson is now just one lap down and he's the only car one lap down and 11 to go in this stage Mike he's just riding around out there he'll be able to capitalize on this stage and get that lap back. Why is What's he riding? Do? Why is he riding around? Save them tires. That's they can right. Stay out. That's right. Uh -huh. Well you see the one car of Ross Chastain leading the race right here. His crew chief's name is Phil Surgeon and he has surgically put him in position to win this stage.
Ross Chastain and his teammate Daniel Suarez spent Friday up at Coda in Austin, Texas, watching Team Trackhouse's uh, MotoGP team run. Chastain was offered a chance to uh, take a ride on one of those bikes yeah. on the back. Uh, I, I've seen that. I, yeah. My good friend, our good friend, Ricky Carmichael, I watched him do that at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and he said it was one of the most thrilling rides he's ever ever taken on a motorcycle in his whole life. So I'm not getting on the back of one of those guys nope. pushing the throttle, leaning that thing over, dragging knees. You no won't way. try it? Nope, not riding on the back of it. I will do it myself, but I am not riding with you, Kevin. I can promise you. Well, I'm not driving. Well, Chastain declined. Something about uh, not being in control. That's right. It's like riding a horse versus a motorcycle. More than one brain involved, you're in trouble. Well, look, look right there. Look at the 11 car as we focus in on the 24 and the 10, but the 11 car of Denny Hamlin, he's all the way back to 13th, Clint. Not sure what's happened to that car on the restart here, but he has definitely lost some spots. Five spots, he's down. All it takes is one checkup. They get together in front of it. It might not even be your behalf. If they get, uh, you know, together off of two, you have to check up to avoid a mishap. Bubba Wallace goes to second. It wasn't very long ago. He was Screaming not very radio. happy yeah. with what was going on in the pits and losing track position. All is good in the world. Second place. As a driver, this is a really frustrating racetrack because of all the things that we've been talking about on the restarts and traffic and bumps. And it's just an uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable to drive from the time you drive in the tunnel until the time you drive out. It's, it's a tough place to get your car right and, and feel comfortable driving it. Well, now you're up here in this perspective and you see what these crew chiefs go through with those drivers whining and then we got track position back. The way this race is playing out is hectic too. Six well, to go in stage two. We listened in on sixth place, Ricky Stenhouse. You got to be careful of the bumps in three and four. I'll just do what you've been doing all day, watching those bumps in three and four. Well, we've talked about them all day. We talked about it before the race. We've seen, we've talked about it when guys are wrecking, and now they continue to talk about it on the radio. It is a, it's a tough spot to put your car and be able to, to make time, but you know you got to be able to go on the outside. And, now look at this group here. Two of them are going to get stage points. The rest are not. Here's how this started. With Gibbs and Hosevar. See a huge run by Chase Elliott to get under <laughs> underneath. And Denny Hamlin had a huge run as well. I was going to say, what huge run were you talking yeah. about? Elliott had a huge run on Gibbs. Hamlin had a huge run on Elliott. Yeah. That about got big. And it all funnels down to a really strange entry into turn one here. Fourth place. Now Blaney's tires are uh, 36 laps newer than Keselowski's. So Brad's doing a great job trying to hang on to a top five spot here. These are huge stage points for Eric Jones, Brad Keselowski. Well, it, it wasn't long ago, Clint. Brad Keselowski was the last car on the lead lap. And talking about not wanting to be th three wide racing for last. And now here he is running fifth most likely going to store some, uh, score some stage points. Three laps to go in the stage. Uh, at that next flag, Larry, Kyle Larson will be back on the lead lap. Well, he will, which will mean he will get the free pass. Now, remember, when you get the free pass, you still have to start at the rear of the field. So in my mind, I'm trying to figure out why is he taking it conservative? Because he, it's not like he can stay out and start at the front, because he's not running more than about 60% throttle anywhere around this track. But remember, nine sets of tires for this entire race, they are on their seventh set right now, so I think they're just trying to preserve this set of tires. I think you're right, Larry. I think they know that they're going to have to continue running this set of tires, so he's doing all he can do to, to take care of those because he's only got two sets left. And any cars that he passes right now will all be erased at the caution flag when he gets the free pass and has to start out back. Yeah, why well, stick your nose in any kind of trouble? Yeah, why look for trouble? That's right. It can find you here. Why go looking for it? Last lap of the stage. Fifth place, Briscoe Keslowski. Uh, tenth is Elliott. Poised to get the final stage point. And Ross Chastain picks up the stage two win. His first stage win of the year and his first at Texas Motor Speedway.
How many times do we say the race can be won or lost on pit road? At least well, once a week. Well, that, yeah, I mean, it's every week. Yeah. Whether it's a, a pit stop or a strategy or whatever that is, there's so much that goes into pit road. And I think Jamie and Regan, they've done a great job on pit road covering these pit crews because they are so important. Well, it's been really fun covering those pit crews, and they're earning it today as Ross Chastain comes in from the lead. And these drivers have everything going on, loose, tight. They have to choose their battles. And Ross Chastain saying his biggest problem is tight in three and four. Help him with that, a little air pressure adjustment and four tires here, Regan. 43 of Eric Jones trying to figure out how to call the race right to be in the right position at the end of it when it's all done. Right now a little bit too loose in turns one and two. They're going to tighten up for that. And the 12 of Ryan Blaney needs help turning into three, and he's tight on the exit everywhere just like he has been all day. So at least second place Bubba Wallace and Harrison Burton did not stop under this caution as Blaney leads them off pit road. For the first time this year, Ross Chastain picks up the stage win. As we get you ready for stage three out of the Texas Motor Speedway, Shannon Spake, Jamie McMurray, an up and down day for a lot of drivers out there, but you have your eyes on Brad Keselowski. Why is that? Yeah, I do. I mean, look, he started in the 22nd position, and when you look at his day, you're going to see that he fell all the way down into the mid-30s. It looked like he was in trouble, but they've used a little bit of strategy. Matt McCall, they pitted at lap 103, the same strategy that the winner of that last stage, Ross Chastain, was on, and they've got themselves up in a decent position right now. Ross is on a 106 race winless streak. No one is hungrier to be able to get a win today at Texas. Yeah, don't look now. Kyle Larson back on the lead lap oh, yeah. after being two laps yeah, this down. Is, this is going to be the, the best to watch right now. Larson, who led 77 laps earlier, we know how fast he is. He had the best car, had this weird freak thing with the right rear tire mm -hmm. falling off. Going to be the best to watch. All right, Mike, back to you for the start of stage three. All right, thanks, Shannon. Time for our Credit One Bank ones to watch. Clint, what driver not named Kyle Larson are you watching? Three-time winner here. We saw Kyle Larson was fast. He was the second fastest car, in my opinion. Denny Hamlin, 11 car. Well, I'm going to go with Bubba Wallace. He'd led 111 laps here, finished third last year, got the lead, stayed out on this strategy. 
think he's got something for him. Well, I have no notes. Uh, thanks, Stat Boys. But I'm going to go out on a limb and just <laughs> trust my gut. Chase Briscoe, he's been the Ford to watch all weekend. Had a great rep in qualifying. He's been in the top ten almost all day and up in the top five. So keep an eye on that fast forward. You don't need stats, Credit Mike. one bank, ones to watch. I think the truth is it's anybody's game as long as these cautions keep coming out, huh? I, I would agree with you, Clint. This is uh, this is going to depend on when the caution falls, who who hits the strategy right. We talked about the crew chiefs up on the pit box playing a huge role in when to come to pit road and when not to. And I think you're right. I think that's what the, what it's going to come down to. And it's there's going to be a little bit of gambling, a little bit of luck. <laughs> I think that latter thing you just said is a contributing factor, without a doubt. Oh, and, the stat, the, and the stat boys just weighed in. Briscoe's finished top 10 in both of his next-gen car appearances here. Well, he's looking good. Important race for him. Rush Truck Center's on the side of that car. Longtime sponsor of that program. Old Rusty told me, he goes, you know, I've been on the hood for 100 races, and I've never won. Just 100? 100. Chase said something like 200. I hate to say that. I mean, you're responsible for a lot for of this. Of <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's here today. He's got over 100 customers on hand cheering on uh, his driver, Chase the, Briscoe. The best thing I heard from Rusty this morning was he lost his voice. No, that's just, that's normal. It, but if Rusty thinks he lost his voice, it must be real bad. <laughs> if he thinks he lost his voice, was he out with you last <laughs> night? No, oh, I okay. know better than that. All right, stage three, Wallace and Briscoe on the front row, Burton and Gibbs, Reddick and Elliott. Here we go. Uh, Harrison Burton up there in that 21 car, Wood Brothers. Looking to the inside here for the lead. Three wide, heading for three. You might clear him, guys. Wallace up the racetrack, way up the racetrack, and into the 14 and around. Dang it. Not the last time I trust my gut. Hey, guys. Not his that fault. That was both of your picks. Yeah, we noticed. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, that's a tough one for a Chase Briscoe, who's got a flat right front. We jinxed him, guys. And right rear. We were just talking about him. Well, you get to go apologize. The to old him. booth jinx. Right. That is real, by the way, Kevin. I don't believe it. See Burton looking the inside off of two. Drag race is on, getting into three. All but had him cleared. Bubba really rifled that thing off into the corner. Shot got up loose. the racetrack. He got a little bit loose, had to work his way up the racetrack, and Got oh, really lucky. Briscoe just didn't have anywhere to go. Yeah, they both got really lucky. They didn't have more damage. You see Kyle Larson at the back right there. When he got the lucky dog, he'll now start where he's running. This would be a good vantage point of exactly what happened. Yeah. Blues, exactly what you said. Saw that thing twitch, has to chase it up the racetrack, ran out of real estate. The rest is history. Caution flag of the day.
92 laps to go here in Texas. Oh, well, the fans put on a show. Yes! What an awesome helmet, Kevin. The infield at Texas is quite the place. Everybody talks about Talladega, but you can have a lot of fun in this infield from what I hear. Yeah, that's what I hear too. <laughs> <laughs> I always heard that over the years, Kevin. <laughs> Things get rowdy down here in Texas. Good culture, good fan base, a lot of fun. Harrison Burton, your race leader for the Wood Brothers in the 21. How about that? Yeah. Good his, on you, Harrison. His dad, Jeff, scored his first ever career cup win here in 1997. I believe I was in victory lane for CBS that day. Big day. You always love a first time winner. And uh, that that was a great one. It had been anticipated for a while. Kind of like when, not if. And, uh, big well, day for the Burtons. He's got control of this race, so. Oh, we, oh, we, I would we say found that's that Kim Burton. We found Kim. If I had to guess. Yes, Kim Nerv Burton. Harrison's mom. Nervous, nervous, nervous. Yep. It's her baby out there. All right, Russell's redeemed. He found the shot from 1997. Uh, there I am about to interview Jeff Burton in victory lane. That's cool. Big, big win. Driving for Jack Roush in the uh, Exide car that day. A lot of fun over the years being teammates with Jeff Burton. Both Kevin and I were had a lot of fun back then, didn't we? Yes, we did. Jeff does so much for our sport. On board with Tyler Reddick's monster energy camera here. New shot in the arm for Tyler Reddick. He was very fast in practice, had that long run speed. Lost some track position on that restart, got shoved up the racetrack. It's back. We have it. Burton and Reddick, Hamlin and Elliott, Smith and Gibbs for the restart. Burton wasted no time. Zane Smith up there in that purple and white car. New player. Gunning for fourth on the inside. Careful that outside. Wow. Whoa. I think he caught him almost faster than he anticipated. It's almost like Zane Smith had to check up a little bit. He's trying to cross over, and it happened before he was ready for it. Well, I'm going to tell you what, Clint. I like what I see out of Chase Elliott today. I love the aggression. We've seen tight side drafting. We've seen pushing, shoving. I want to see a, an aggressive Chase Elliott like we've seen today. And I think it's it's paying off for him. It's put him in position over and over and over on these restarts. Tyler Reddick crossover move looking for the lead and ran out of room on the bottom of the racetrack against Burton. He was Goes up half that, a lane. Sorry, he was looking for that crossover much like you saw now to the outside. Can he make it stick? Stay in there. Yes, sir. Got the pass. Holder, bumper, you were clear. Focus forward, you'll drive away. Well, this is what we thought we'd see today. Tyler Reddick leading laps. We thought his car was one of the best cars in practice. Qualified well. Hasn't flexed his muscle up in the front much. He's way up the racetrack in the wall. I think it's Nemechek. It is. We stay green, and he continues. Whoa. Almost got run over by Kyle Larson. Well, yeah. he didn't. He's in the middle of the straightaway. Didn't stay, yeah, didn't stay up. Turn oh, two, way. car in the wall. Blaney. Goodness. Big damage. And that's a caution. The tenth one of the day. Lap 181. Ooh, that's a unbelievable. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just as we run this race, we talked about it earlier. This is just a really, really edgy racetrack to drive on. As these guys start to push it a little bit more, it's just so easy to get yourself in, in trouble. Running up the racetrack, if you get out of the groove just a little bit, the car will step around on you. You try to get a little bit more, it steps out. I'm he late. may have got some help. You see that back here, the back of your screen, I think that was Priest was right on his back bumper. I don't know if he did a late block or whatever, but I think he got some help. Blaney was 15th at the time.
damage to the rear and right rear corner. Well, I'm sure if he got some help, we're going to hear about it on the radio. That's yep. exactly that's a good point. If you go back. Let's see if they can go back and. If they came into frame. It was definitely very close. Well, either way, his car's tore up and he's not a player anymore. And man, the attrition rate keeps going up. Ah, oh, it's so hard to tell right there. Yeah, we see we see Ryan Priest kind of work up the racetrack right there. It's hard to tell what happened on the entry to the corner. So yeah, it could have been a late block or something. Yeah, you just never know. So we'll go to break working the 10th caution flag of the day and Tyler Reddick leading in Texas. Welcome back to the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400 at Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, Clint's going to give us a lesson here. Cause and effect. There is the cause. There is the effect. Look at this leaderboard and look at the goose eggs of drivers right there who are looking for their first career win in the Cup Series who are in the top 10. Hey, cautions are opportunities. We know that. It just might be somebody's day. Pace car is in. Reddick and Burton up front. Hamlin and Elliott, Smith and Gibbs, Byron and Busher, Gregson and Truex. Good launch on the outside by Harrison Burton again. All 33 cars on track are on the lead lap. Still making repairs to Blaney on pit road. Now two laps down. But Truex making it three wide, peeking on the outside. That's a bold move, Kevin. Yeah, and a lot of confidence in your car. I mean, it's so easy to step out of the groove right there, but obviously he's been up there to be able to know the grip level. But wow, Byron pushing his teammate Elliott around them and then following suit. That was another one. Zane Smith on the bottom trying to go fifth to second. That's not going to happen as Elliott forges ahead. Well, we talked about it on the last restart. Chase Elliott has been aggressive. Puts himself in P3.
See Brad Keselowski shoot out right there to go past Christopher Bell. Christopher Bell still on the lead lap running 20th. No fender. He's got no fender on the right front. This is definitely going to be a battle of attrition because I don't think we've seen our last caution, Clint. No. And less than 20 laps ago, Ross Chastain was leading. There he is back trying to scramble back into the top 15. Well, he's making up some ground with, a, with good aggressive moves on the on the restarts. That's how he's made ground all day. You see Eric Jones get a little bit loose. Not enough room for Ross to shoot Ooh. the gap right there. Going to check him up. Now Ross is going to have to block the momentum of Austin Cindric on the top. Do these guys not realize there's 80 laps to go? Well, it's just so hard to pass in, in certain situations. Once yeah, but the it's easy to wreck. Yeah. It is easy to wreck. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> The restarts are the time that you have to make hay and you got to be willing to the guy who's willing to take the most chances will gain the most spots. Ryan Blaney exited the pits but they had too many men over the wall working on the car under the damaged vehicle policy on the clock so he is back in the pits for a two lap penalty. Five's in trouble back here. He can't go anywhere. Lost more track position off of two. Well, that's what we talked about earlier, Clint, with that flat tire. How much of that diffuser did, did it drag off? How, how, how bad did it hurt the bottom of the car? Well, and how much is it trimmed out? That car was in the lead. They were on the pole for the race. They were trimmed out to be in the pole for the race. You get mired back here in traffic, whole different ball game in dirty air. All right, looking at Larson from the advent health camera of Jimmy Johnson. Everybody on the lead lap. Now remember the last two caution periods, uh, Kyle Larson did not stop, so he's on older tires trying to preserve what they have left. Regan? Well, Mike, just to update, Kyle Larson, he just came across the radio, said it is absolutely plowing tight. Doesn't know why, but it's not where he wants it right now as we see contact on the front stretch. Jimmy Johnson working the throttle from 25th place. Oh, they're Bang beating up. and banging on each other, going down the back straightaway, not happy with one another. You couldn't. That was. They actually door slammed one another, going down the back straightaway. Chase Briscoe goes by. And now Harrison Burton, those older tires, telling the tale uh, back there at ninth spot against uh, Chris Busher, who's the one Texas native in this field. Tyler Reddick out in front of Denny Hamlin by one second. Chase Elliott third, William Byron fourth, and Jamie, how about Zane Smith in fifth? Yeah, how about this run for them running fifth right now? It has been a rough rookie campaign. He's finished 29th or worse in six races this year. He ran the truck race here on Friday night. I think that contributed to his confidence. But guys, he just queued up the radio and he said, man, this is a different series up here. It's completely different in this air running with these guys. Great race that he is having. And back here, this, this is, is toward mess. the back of the pack. What a mess. It is a mess, Mike. I mean, lap after lap, corner, they are all over one another, making dive bombs, passes. You can see the frustration settle in. Nothing is working for this group of cars. Well, and it wasn't long ago, Bubba Wallace was up here leading this race. Kyle Larson has been up front leading the race. So these guys are running 23rd and 24th right now. And you're right. I think they're pretty frustrated with the fact that they're sitting in the back of the pack like that and having to deal with all the dirty air and things that happen. Two laps ago, Bubba Wallace and Kyle Busch almost door slammed each other. All right, Ryan Blaney going another lap down from Tyler Reddick. Here's his radio about the crash. Plow it tight back here, dude. Half back, 41. Just be careful with him. Going to push you here. Inside, just wrecked us. Wow, oh, that's totally sure destroyed. Put down some of your wheels, man. Right? It's at 3 o'clock. Hmm. Well, that's what I thought happened, and he said, 
you heard Fido say he wrecked his. 71 to go in Texas. Tyler Reddick leading Denny Hamlin by 1.3. We'll take you box side by side. Two hundred one laps complete. Harrison Burton, you saw pitting from tenth place on a completely different strategy than the rest of the drivers in the top ten, most of whom were on pit road from lap one thirty nine to one forty three. The exception being Ricky Stenhouse, who pitted some uh, thirty eight laps later. Stenhouse and Gregson eighth and ninth there, with Tyler Reddick leading Denny Hamlin now by. Three full seconds and another three back to Chase Elliott. Still 32 cars on the lead lap. Burton now one lap down after the stop, and Blaney after the crash, long pit stop, and penalty. Now eight laps down. Yeah, it's so mixed up, guys. It's it's hard to tell exactly who's got a good strategy, who doesn't have a good strategy. We think you're going to see some more cautions, but it's it's hard to see how this is all going to play out. So there are these drivers that stop between lap 139 and 143, or about 60 laps to go. What's ahead for them? Yeah, I would say, Mike, they're going to run here about another maybe. 8, 10, 12 laps, get up to about lap 210 or 215. And then everyone, like you mentioned, Stenhouse and those others that pitted at 168, I think they split this stage at half, which is going to have them coming somewhere around lap 220. Strategies all over the place, though. Well, we saw Kyle Larson kind of back there battling. We thought he was done, and then all of a sudden now he's making up spots back up to. 19th spot. Well, I think they finally stretched out, right? It, it is mired back in that traffic and that dirty air. I think once he got some space in between these cars, he could go again. I, I'm wondering if that car was maybe trimmed out a little bit more. Obviously, it sat on the pole. We made note of that in qualifying, how much faster it was down the straightaway. Austin Sendrick on to pit road. Well, the other, the other thing that we haven't talked about here lately is Tyler Reddick has a 4.7 second lead. 
flying. He is gone. flying, and that's what we expected. And once he got the clean air and was able to get his car to the front of the pack, he has put the pedal down. He was four tenths of a second faster than second place that lap of of second place of Denny Hamlin. So he is definitely flying. He's up the racetrack in the second groove. Austin Sindrick got four new good years and a full tank of fuel, so he is back out there, but loses a lap in the exchange. Can't pit hard to pit under green here and not lose a lap, unless of course you're Tyler Reddick with a big lead. That may draw a few more of them to pit road. But so far, not the leaders. Uh, Chris Busher is in. For what looks like four tires. Yeah, Mike, you pit here. You're good to go the rest of the way. This will get you to the end on fuel. Thanks, Larry. So Chastain back up into the top 10 with that pass of Eric Jones. Well, we've seen these two going at it for the last last several laps. Uh, Ty Gibbs in sixth, and Martin Truex feels like I feel like he's got a little bit faster car. He's been working the back bumper of of Ty Gibbs pretty hard. You see him up the racetrack. That's where I like to run on those hash marks. They seem to get a little grippy as as the race goes on. A little more grip in that second groove, right in the, right in the corner on those hash marks. Very technical racetrack. See Martin up the racetrack trying to get chase him up the racetrack a little bit him, there. Get him up the racetrack a little bit. <laughs> I think it was he'd had enough. Yeah, Ty is like, all right, go on. <laughs> Justin Haley made his pit stop for uh, four tires and fuel. Yeah, and you see Ricky Stenhouse right there on the inside of Ty Gibbs. They've played a little bit of strategy today, and now they've put themselves in seventh position and been able to to maintain that position. So good job by that 47 group today to to put Ricky in position to to have a chance to run up front. Race leader Tyler Reddick about to get into a bit of traffic here. Well I, I, I like I like the fact that he can do this. He's up in that second groove. Everybody else that he's catching for the most part is on the bottom right there. I feel like that Reddick could probably run the bottom but it seems like when this groove is moved up as we see William Byron on pit road. Well last week William Byron was the first of the leaders to pit. Jamie. William Byron been pretty happy with this race car today just a little bit tight right now. It was good enough last fall when they went to victory lane get enough fuel in it to make it to the end almost stalled it right there. So Byron is out as Chase Elliott is. Hendrick teammate comes to pit road. Regan. Chase Elliott continuing to have a very good day. Latest update from the driver has been the car is good. It's secure. He likes what it's been doing. And it's been the case for most of the day so far. Noah Gregson also getting four tires and fuel. And your race leader Tyler Reddick on pit road. There he is. And Denny Hamlin. Regan. Tyler Reddick was struggling with the tires as we were having cycles and all those cautions said the car was continuing to just act weird for him. But once he was able to get out front no comments about it since then Jamie his team owner Denny Hamlin said he's really tight. He said this car does something different every single run here. It made a slight adjustment air pressure for Denny Hamlin trouble on Tyler Reddick. They took a long time on the right side of the car. Yeah I think it was a right rear Mike you're spot on lost a ton of time on pit road. You see Denny Hamlin go right by him. Well Reddick had a six second lead at the start of this pit stop cycle as Martin Truex is in. Well that is gone. Yep. Stenhouse comes in with Truex Jimmy Johnson as well. Well, we see it week after week, Mike. We've seen just trouble after trouble on pit road with mistakes. The the pit stops are so short now. You have to be on edge of of making a mistake. Week after week, we've seen lug nuts get hung. We've seen guns get jammed. There's just so many things that can go wrong in such a short amount of time on pit road. And Tyler Reddick got bit that time. And Reddick was maybe the only driver that had a chance to pit under green without losing a lap, and that they threw that chance away.
Oh, man, you hear that just barely lifted getting in the corner and it turns three and four. I'll show you the pit stop comparison between Reddick and Hamlin. Seven seconds difference on the stop. Well, right now, Ross Chastain has just lost a one second, almost one second. He lost nine tenths of a second that lap to Tyler Reddick. So they're going to stay out and make these laps and but it is coming at the cost of a pretty hefty penalty from a time standpoint. Kyle Larson in for his stop and here comes Chastain. Yeah they just they had to pit. I mean it was just too much lap time. Jamie. Yeah with 50 laps to go here they said bring it on down. We're going to take right sides only wait on us. We need to get just enough fuel to make it to the end. Joey Logano becomes the race leader from Keselowski Priest and Gilliland. Still 15 cars that have not stopped in this green flag cycle in positions 1 to 15. Well, you see Joey, Joey staying out on the racetrack. Here comes Truex on the pit road. Joey Logano staying out. On the racetrack, we saw this work out for Chase Elliott earlier. And it's the second stop for Truex on this cycle. He had a loose wheel. Here's uh, here's the first stop on Truex. Left rear, the gun is spinning. Uh, but apparently the wheel uh, like, not locking. It's like the threads were galled up or something. You see the gun was having trouble getting it to yep. tighten. Yeah. Man. And here's the 19's radio. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about earlier with Kyle Larson's wheel. It had to feel weird like that on the straightaway, and Martin Truex recognized that and, and was able to bring his car to pit road before the wheel actually damaged itself and they were able to tighten that wheel back up but that's what it feels like when that wheel comes loose the back moving around cost Truex two laps making the extra stop so Logano six tenths of a second up on Keselowski then Priest everybody back to Kaz Grala in 13th uh, has not made a stop here comes Bubba Wallace he is one of those 13. Well, and right now, Joey Logano wants to most likely run this as far as it will go, like Chase Elliott did earlier, hoping, hoping that the caution will come out. Larry, how long do you think he can go? Logano, that is. Yeah, yeah, Mike, they came in and topped off at lap 175, and we've had four or five cautions since he topped off of there. I think Paul Wolf says we can't beat them straight up. We're going to do it by a different strategy. This was big and we missed it. I'm sorry, it was on me. Reddick passed Hamlin. Obviously, a lot has to happen here. They're still going, but this is the old, essentially the race for the lead. Reddick passed him right here. Well, Reddick was was several tenths of a second faster than than Denny Hamlin. He was absolutely flying, catching Denny Hamlin, and he rolled up on him and rolled up on Denny, and Denny was like. You just go on because you are way faster than I am right now. Now on the scoreboard, they're 13th and 14th, but to Clint's point, they are the first drivers in the race with fresh tires. Well, the, 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 the rest of them haven't pitted yet. Right. Yep. Fast lap times. I mean, we were all over it with Reddick, the lap times that he was running in the lead, but I thought, you know, when Hamlin beat him off a of pit road, no chance he goes back and drives right by him. Did it at will. Very easy. 
So the last lap, Reddick, six tenths of a second faster than race leader Joey Logano. Yeah, and that's what we were talking about earlier with the one car. When, when he had to pit, he was giving up a, a fair amount of time. You're going to give up a fair amount of lap time, but at some point you've made your bed. you got to let it play out, and if it doesn't work and you don't get a caution, then it is what it is. And for Joey Logano, they weren't having a great day anyway. They were somewhere in the teens, and right now they're hoping that they get, get some, some luck to fall their way. And look at this top five, Logano with Keselowski, uh, who had a rough start to the day. Priest, LaJoy, and Bush in a backup car who started this race out back. 41 laps to go in Texas. We're going to take you Fox side by side. <laughs> Terry Hogg. We're under caution. It's the 11th caution of the day. Comes out of lap 228. You saw it in the double box, uh, but it's John Hunter Nemechek up on the outside of Austin Sindrick, but around oh. he goes hard into the wall. That thing, and that thing the turned garage. around quick. It was light on its feet. You could tell it all. Didn't take much. He barely touched the wheel, and that thing came around. Well, he had some prior damage from, uh, let's see, two other cautions. Look at Bubba Wallace. Yeah. That's a hard shot. I wrecked very similar to that here at Texas in this car, and that's the time that it, it hit so hard that it hung the top of my foot on the gas pedal and hung it wide open. Well, All right, several now comes cars here that didn't pit. My favorite line from Days of Thunder. You can't pit now, Cole. We're eating ice cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boy, the, are we. That's the truth. Andy's frozen custard. Yeah, the uh, sponsor of yesterday's mm, race. Uh, that's not right. That was really good. And I'm sorry to everybody in Which the I'll production get. truck. Uh, Graham Smith is in charge of Buy ice cream chocolate. delivery. You can call him and maybe he'll it's bring you some. They have a truck here on the good. good as I'm that Oreo. And that. It's, it's really mm. good. Yep. We got work to do, guys. Joey Logano, Brad Kozlowski, Ryan Priest, Corey LaJoy, Kyle Busch, Chase Briscoe, Daniel Suarez, all the way back to Kaz Grala. They just got a gift. Christmas is here. Well, that's what they were hoping for. And sometimes, usually hope is not a good strategy, but today it worked out. Worked for Chase Elliott. It's worked for Joey Logano. And all of the 12 cars, or 11 cars, right behind him. They are the lead lap cars all the way back to Ross Chastain. And other than the five that just pitted and are still on the lead lap, here they come. Jamie. 
Kyle Busch just said on the radio when the caution came out, we might get lucky here as you see Brad Keselowski brings it in. Brad optimistic on the radio as well, saying pretty good balance there for that six. Kyle Busch, they debated what should we do, two tires versus four. Two tires was the call, Regan. Ryan Priest has been working on the front side of runs all day long, needing the car to take off better. You see two tires there. The balance was okay this run. He liked where it was at in the 22. Joey Logano had some damage to fix the last stop. They were able to do that, and the balance is close for him as well. And Ryan Priest is going to be the first off pit road ahead of Kyle Busch. And they will line up behind the cars that did not pit under this caution but are on the lead lap. Oh, come on, Mike. Pick those out for us. Yeah, there's that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Good luck. I this has been the craziest, most mixed up race that I have been able to do so far. I was just joking with you there because. I know. I told it, you. It, We're it, busy eating ice cream. Yeah, it is so mixed up. We've seen people to the front, to the back, so, in the wall, back to the front. <laughs> Put a lot of those guys a lap down. I mean, to your point, there's several cars went a lap down because that just hadn't cycled yet when that caution came out. So here are the drivers who did stop prior to the caution flag. Tyler Reddick, Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott, Byron, Chastain, Smith, Gregson, and Gibbs. Those are the lead lap cars that had stopped under green prior to the caution. See how they line up when they when scoring cycles around as they come by to complete lap 232, 35 to go. Drivers that got trapped a lap down, unless uh, they get a wave around here, well, a bunch of them will, so let's hold off for that. There will be a bunch of wave arounds. For cars that do not pit, but are ahead of the race leader behind the caution car, beginning with Gregson. It's a bunch. Yep. Gregson, Gibbs, Stenhouse, Jones, Larson, and Busher, and more. It's a bunch, and you're running out of time. 35 laps to go. I mean, with cautions or whatever, you still just running out of opportunities. Well, now you see the, the pace car pull over. You see all the wave arounds start to go around. What that means is they're going to be able to pass the pace car and come back to the, the back of the field to get their lap back and put them back on the lead lap. And Tyler Reddick will settle back in behind the pace car as the leader of the race. We mentioned earlier, Chris Buescher is the one driver from Texas in this race. Used to be, of course, the Labonte brothers and, uh, and more. He's from Prosper, Texas. When he grew up there, it was a cow town of about 500 people. But no more. We can't pick on Prosper anymore because all of these star athletes have called Prosper, Texas home. Wow. Major League Baseball, NFL uh, football, the, even a, a six-time Olympic figure skate, or world figure skating champion have lived in Prosper, Texas. In fact, Dak, Dak Prescott has a, a 9,000 square foot home on seven acres. No cow town anymore. Prosper is now an affluent north side suburb of Dallas. That you just read off of Wikipedia. That's exactly what that was right there. I know your knowledge and your absorption level is way greater than Kevin and I's, but that sounded Wikipedia-ish to me. It is on the Prosper Texas Wikipedia page. <laughs> but then we had to research each of those individuals. Well, did they grow up in Prosper? No, the only one that did was Busher. How many of them would still live in Prosper now, Clint? My man called out a 9,000 square foot home. Dak Prescott. <laughs> and Matt Carpenter still lives in the area. Uh, his dad was a state championship high school baseball coach in Prosper, Texas. Well, you read the whole thing. I always get done like the first sentence. Well, that's because I, I didn't go to the stockyards last I, night. I always feel like I know more when I get done with every race weekend <laughs> with Mike, but I always feel like I'm pretty dumb uh, uh, because I don't know that much other than what might be happening on this racetrack at times. So thanks for all the knowledge, Mike. <laughs> we appreciate that. Well, let's figure out what's going to happen next because as we line up, uh, the first half dozen or so cars are going to be those that did not pit under the caution. And they now have 18 laps on their tires, the last four or five of them under caution as John Hunter Nemechek has been uh, released from the care center. Got some hungry drivers on the inside of this, row one, row two. Reddick, he wants this win. Been fast all weekend long, good opportunity for him. But that nine car, Chase Elliott behind him, you know that boy's hungry. Been a long time for him. There you go. Told you. 
We've talked about it all day. Elliott, bottom shot to the lead. Wow. Chase has been really, really aggressive, and that's the style of race that this has become on the restarts, and Chase has done it. He's put himself in position to take the lead. Look at this guy. Chase Elliott looking for his first top five finish on a mile and a half track in this next generation car. Well, he's had a couple of the last last few weeks, so. He could care less as a champion. He could care less about a top five. He wants this win bad. Well, I'm telling you what, Clint, I, I mean, the hunger and desire that I have seen out of Chase Elliott today, I love it. Been on a little bit of a roll. Last couple weeks, he was really strong. Short tracks were good to him, just solid, right? Didn't lead a ton of laps or anything else, but he was solid, always in the picture. Man, Bush has been the, he has he had a tough weekend in Texas. Priest gonna thread the needle here between Bush and Suarez. Oh, that was close. Joey Logano cut in some slack right there and didn't, didn't get into the back bumper. Suarez in eighth after overcoming a penalty earlier. Well, this this race is opened up for anybody. No, yeah. you know, I think right now Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, Ross Chastain, Tyler Reddick, uh, you know, they're, they're the they're the first four cars on the racetrack. But look at Austin Dillon there. That's, that's the first time we've said second time we've said his name today. It's opened up the door for yeah. an Austin Dillon to have a good day, a decent finish. Look at the blocks and the aggression of these guys. I mean, you're focusing on one car, you look in the background, and they're running each other clear to the apron. Reddick and Chastain are running each other all over the racetrack as they battle for third place. Can it be 29 laps to go, keeping that 11 car behind him? 11 cars make good, great, uh, good grip on the long runs, Kevin, all day long. Reddick trying to set Ross up here. This is for third place. Well, and Reddick, nope. Reddick needs, needs to make this pass. Like, if he's going to have a chance to win, he needs to make it pretty quick. I still believe he has the fastest car, but this is going to be a tough pass for him to make. We talk about it every week. Ross Chastain is a difficult pass. Hear him shifting. They're down shifting from fifth to fourth in turns one and two. Come down to the other end, leaving in fifth gear. Chastain's doing a fantastic job taking the air off of his nose. Yeah. Making him tighten his weight. Well, watch the way that Ross Chastain will enter this corner. He'll be looking in the mirror, looking in the mirror. He thinks Tyler's going to run high this time, so he just stays in the high groove. Tyler wants to be in that groove. That's where his car has been the best all day. But Ross is learning what Tyler, he knows. They're feeding him the information to say, hey, he's been running the top. You need to run here. Put your car in front of him. And the cavalry's coming. Brad Keselowski uh, just made the pass on William Byron. He wants to be up in part of that battle, too. Best run for Keselowski in a while. Yeah, and what happens in the situation like uh, the two cars in front of him with Chastain, he knows that Reddick's car is faster in that groove, but he would have been running there as well if he thought his car was that fast. So it is definitely going to slow those two down. And the however here is Keselowski is on fresher tires than either of these two. Reddick definitely rolls the middle with better speed than he does, and it, you can tell with his throttle. He's free. He's pedaling that thing, driving it with the throttle. Tells you he's loose inside that race car. You see him driving in there. He's going to wash up the racetrack. Got it. So about one by half. He better look in his mirror. Here comes Keselowski. Drops to the bottom. Chastain got tight in his wake. Had to lift out of the gas. Keselowski around him. Well, and Brad is another car that was at the back of the pack the first stage of this race, and now he's in a position. He's got better tires. Uh, he's worked on his car all day, survived the attrition of, of everything that's been going on, and I, I believe he can utilize those better tires to, to make himself competitive with these three cars in front of him. And that's a huge turnaround because at the start of the race, he drifted straight to the back. Horrible. Keselowski. It was, it was pathetically bad at the beginning of the race. And now look at it. Do you remember, though, 
Remember listening to his in-car. They were trying to put him three wide on the outside. He said, no way. This is dumb. We're going to get out of this thing. We're going to survive to see a better day. Had some good fortune come his way with the way the strategy's played out. He uh, has the upper hand with tires. That's because he's a, look at this, pass for the lead, Denny Hamlin. Hamlin into the three outside of Elliott. Their last lap was about two tenths slower than the cars chasing them. As they battle hard, a foot apart, dead heat at the line. See Chase have to lift out of the gas. Oh, car in the wall, 45. Yeah. Turn I, two. I heard the end car. I heard that somebody had to lift. There's, I don't know what exactly happened there, but obviously Tyler Reddick got the short end of it. It's like the left rears. Yeah, I think the six got got loose probably and got up into the side of the 45. I heard. We stay green with 21 to go. There's a look on the right. Oh, no. no. No that contact. Was, that was Tyler Reddick's car that I heard lift in my ear. Yep. He just got loose. Great save. I saw something down on the side skirt flapping. I thought it looked Ooh. like it was it. Wow. You hear the tire what squealing. You could hear the tire squealing right there. Great save for Reddick, who is now eighth. You can see him immediately starting to saw on the wheel, trying to clean those tires up. Kozlowski last lap four tenths faster than either Hamlin or Elliott. Larry. Yeah, we've had two Gen 7 car races here at Texas. The average of the last caution, Mike, is around 18 to go two laps from now. We've, ne we've not had an overtime finish, but remember our last two races at Richmond and Martinsville, we did have an overtime. Well, we've had a little bit of everything today. Well, what we've got right now is the onboard camera of the fastest car on the racetrack. So it's right. it's going to be interesting to see if Brad's car will stay that way as as we continue the, with this run. But he's been a couple tenths faster, a tenth and a half faster that lap. Reddick fighting back against Briscoe. This will be for seventh. Coming up after today's cup race in Texas, the NHRA four wide nationals from Las Vegas. That coverage here on FS1 will follow the cup race. Eighteen laps to go uh, in Texas. In case you missed it, let's get you caught up here. It's been an eventful day. Check up here, check up here, check up here. Easy, right in the middle of the track. Hang on, we're in it. Talk a minute here. I think I have a flat tire. Yeah, it's definitely flat right rear. Right rear. Or the whole wheel is gone, I think. Yeah, except for the whole wheel. 11 caution flags total, including the two stage breaks. And five cars out of the race, not including these two. Major damage to Blaney. He's now 10 laps down. And out of race, John Hunter Nemechek, Michael McDowell, Josh Berry, Alex Bowman, and the 33, the third Childress car, driven by Austin Hill. Blaney had a lot more help than I thought. If I saw that in car right there, Kevin. Yeah, and usually, wow. usually when something's that aggressive, there's probably several things that happen before that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a little bit of blocking, irritation. Well, there are the two drivers highest on the since last win streak. Brad Kay and Chase Elliott. Well, I think Brad Keselowski's car is, is definitely faster than these two, but now it's the good on the tires is, is kind of leveling out, and it's not as easy to pass as it was 10 laps ago. Losing your upper hand, you saw it right there. He had to lift out of the gas, got tight and awakened. Chase Elliott tells you, just like you said, starting to lose the goody in the good years. Well, behind them, fourth and, oh boy, Ricky Stenhouse. We well, were off a couple laps, but not by much, Larry. There oh, it I'm is. Dropping. 
12th caution flag, lap 254. Oh my, this changes stuff again. Right side's down. Wow. Stenhouse was, be coming to you. was 19th and on the lead lap. And we'll try to limp it back to pit road. Is it too late for those tires that we spoke of on Keselowski? Take advantage of this restart? I mean, they're, they're definitely fresher. Um. He just had oh. to lift to keep from running over Gibbs. I don't know why he caught him so fast, but then he got up on the marbles. and You can see it shooting out behind the car there. Larry says those two had been running each other hard for the last five laps. Uh, well, Larry, does this, <laughs> with all the differing strategies today, does this change anything? You know, Mike, I just think track position is so important. I, I look at Brad Keselowski in that six. You guys said it. I think he's got a faster race car. If this caution benefits anybody, it's certainly Brad on those fresher tires. But no different than the last restart, and you guys know it. It's going to be all about this restart. That's Elbows what it's going to be all about. Well, Absolutely. What, what do you think about this, Larry? You think that's the last caution? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. Yeah, it just might be at the front of this thing. Yeah, it's, it's going to be some well, aggression. It was the last time we were here. It was, you know, Kyle Larson spun out. Chase Elliott's not done. He's been really good on the restarts. Yes, sir. Maybe, just maybe, dare I wish for a finish like in yesterday's Xfinity Series race. Sam Mayer ran down Ryan Sieg, who had Oh, about a 20 car length lead past him going into turn three. See, crosses under, and there is the margin. An inch or so, Sam Mayer denies Ryan Sieg his first win in 400 plus Xfinity races and the first win for Ford in a NASCAR National Series this season. That's how close it was. It was a heartbreaker for Ryan Sieg. I've always been a fan of his. He's done a lot with a little over the years, and he just about had that job done. Man, it was so close. I mean, was it a half inch? 180 mile an hour, a half inch finish? I'll take that. You're right, Mike. I like that. I, I will take that same exact photo finish. Denny Hamlin is your race leader. We listened in. We have uh, not had this go our way. Caution lines, but we're going to win it anyway. It don't matter. We are staying out. You were better than them behind you, slightly. Just think about what you need for the restart. Well, knowing what you know, Clint, you you, you believe all that comment? Well, I like the confidence. Yeah. You know, I, I want. I, I like the fact that he believes in his driver, and he should. As many but, races and as good as he is, but. Um, you're also, as Larry alluded to, you're staying out here. You're not going to come in and take tires. There's no time to make that up. And you've got a, a whale of a driver behind the wheel. But I, he, I don't think it's going to be as easy as he just <laughs> well, said. Well, no. All right. So Hamlin's going to take the inside for the restart. Every leader has done that today. If he takes the inside, does Chase Elliott take the outside? Or does he go for the bottom shot off turn two that has worked well for him all day long? I don't know. I don't know that you want to give that six car the front row. I think that he is the best uh -huh. car. He's got the freshest, freshest tires. And I think if you give him the front row, I think he might drive by him. What do you do if you're the nine, though, and you stay on that outside? It's Larry or Mike alluded to right there. It does not prevail. Well, the, the good news is I'm sitting up here, and I don't have to make that decision. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie. Well, Brad Keselowski and the six team, they were disappointed when they unloaded yesterday. I know Brad just wasn't optimistic coming into today, Matt, but you guys have made some good adjustments to this car. Now you're in position. You're on older tires, though. What do you think you have for the two guys ahead of you? Yeah, I mean, you know, we got lucky with that caution there. It helped track position. Uh, uh, Brad thought the cars are pretty good the whole time, but this restart will be a lot of fun. So Brad's ready for it. We'll see what happens. Well, he's got some laps on his tires, fewer than the guys ahead of him, so that should help, Mike. Thanks, Jamie. All right, everybody from 21st on back pitted. And why not? With uh, 10 laps to go. Everybody in the top 20 stayed out. The drivers on the oldest tires are Byron and Reddick in sixth and seventh. Elliott and Hamlin, second and first. 
and Chastain. Out of the top 10, they have the oldest tires, the drivers on the fresh tires. You mentioned Keslowski, Suarez, Briscoe, Priest, and Logano have the freshest tires among the top 10. One thing I notice under all these cautions is just how much bigger swipes that Ross Chastain takes than a lot of these guys under under the caution warming their tires up. He'll do it all the way coming over to the over to the restart zone. Well, it's time to get him warmed up, get him cleaned up. When he gets down there to turn one, all right. tires, that thing's got to go left. Most important shoes of the day, Hamlin inside, Elliott outside, and Keselowski second row inside. Well, you know, you know Brad Keselowski is going to want to go three wide and put himself in a position to try to force the lead going into turn one. And Denny Hamlin is going to want to block. So this is going to be, it's going to be aggressive. And like you said, Clint, they're going to have their elbows out. So far this year has belonged to Hendrick Motorsports. William Byron leading the league with three. And Joe Gibbs Racing, Denny Hamlin with two. Daniel Suarez for Trackhouse. Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell. Well, if you're Chase Elliott on the outside, you do not, you can't afford for that to happen. If Brad gets to the inside of him and you're three wide getting into one, you're in trouble. Ricky Bobby's made an appearance. And have we mentioned Ross Chastain, who will be right there as well, in fourth on the restart. Let's look at him there, Clint. Suarez, Byron right behind them. Reddick and Briscoe. Dylan and Priest. That's your top ten. This has got all the ingredients to get wild right here. 31 lead lap cars, including Martin Truex, who got the free pass. As we get set to settle this, they'll have eight laps to race. We're back to green. Connected pretty good on the outside. Good push by Chastain. Chase Elliott gets in with him. Can he stay in the throttle? He's there, Clint. Oh, wrecking behind him. That's Larson. Got it gathered up. Nope, caution. Who was in the lead? Who was in the lead, guys? In the back. I think Chase Elliott may have the up, lead. Up it's going to be close. I believe you're right. So scoring on these cautions goes back to the last scoring loop crossed before the button was pushed for the yellow lights. And I, it's very close. And we'll await NASCAR's ruling. Elliott's the leader, we're told. Here's what happened. To Kyle Larson. Uh, he and Zane Smith side by side, four oh, wide. Four wide, yeah. yeah. 16 got into Smith, who got into Larson. Yeah, and Larson, yeah, he was just happened to be the top car. He he did not expect three cars to be below him, and there's just it's just not that wide right there. And Zane got a little contact from the car below him and up into the up into the five to spin him around. That was one of those so on and so on and so on. Yeah, and Larson just never could clear the middle of the pack to get himself back in contention. This was big for Chase Elliott. That was a big win for him. So now what do you do? He just took the lead on the outside. Do you pick the outside again? Be Heck no. If he took the lead because he had a good, because of the guy behind him. He took the lead because Chastain gave him a great push getting off into one, got established in the track position with, uh, with Hamlin. And the rest was history. You go back down to the bottom and you get them elbows up and you block big time. Get a well, good jump. Don't not too early. Well, if we end up with Chastain and Keselowski in row two for this restart, they're the best pushers here. Yeah, I, I would agree. I just I don't know that you want to give up the bottom, but I I don't I don't think it. Oh, my gosh. Look how close that was. That's how close it was. And that's where the drivers were positioned, according to GPS data at the last scoring loop crossed before the yellow lights came on. Huge, huge. I, I think it I think you could I think you could take the lead on the bottom or the top right here, Clint. I think it all depends on help how, from behind how good your push is. He did a good job. I'm, I'm talking about Chase Hill. He did a good job with the jump, but absolutely had that connection. You saw it with Chastain from the word go. Chastain was pushing on that bumper. They were behind a little bit at first and he pushed him straight by the leader, Denny Hamlin. Chase Elliott's been on it on these restarts. That's, yes. you could tell the hunger. He's focused, he's sharp, his eye is on the ball. 
So if Hamlin chooses first row outside, and we think he will, that would put Chastain behind Elliott and Keselowski behind Hamlin. Maybe. Well, <laughs> you're right, maybe. <laughs> Regan? Well, uh, Alan Gustafson has gotten his driver chase Elliott into position. You guys have been good all day, good strategy calls, everything working out. Has he got enough as he's going to have a conversation? Has he got enough here at the end to hold it off? Yeah, I think so. It's super close, you know, so it's going to be, you know, touch and go here. Restarts are tough, but super proud of the team. Uh, yeah, I want to take a second to say condolences to the Labonte family. They've been huge in my career. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's sad to lose Bob like that. So thinking about them. But, yeah, I think we got a great shot. Super proud of the guys. I think Chase is uh, going to have to get it done. All right, good luck. Thanks. Great read, great leader right there, Clint. Huge Alan Gustaf Gustafson fan. Um, and I, I, I like the... I like the fire that Allen has. I've always admired the, the fact that he just loves what he does and just a great crew chief. You absolutely don't have to wonder who he's rooting for and who his guy is. Always standing beside his man. Well, there you go. Ross Chastain picked the top, Mike. So he went from third to fourth to have the top lane. And that's what, that's what, oh, no, never mind. What Sorry. am I talking about? <laughs> yeah, what a mess. I I'll was, tell you what. I we'll, was so excited. I know. We'll re-rack this in a lap. I did it last week. We'll re-rack this in a lap, and we'll, and we'll get the choose for you right now. Let's check in with Shannon and Jamie Mack. All right, exciting stuff happening at Texas Motor Speedway. Chase Elliott chooses the inside line. Where do you want to line up? Well, I want to I want to line up on the outside. That's what got Chase Elliott the lead. He had that great push uh, from Ross Chastain. So I would want to get in that same position, watching the balance of his car. It looked like it was tight when Denny was able to pass him. I would want to give Denny the outside. You talk about pushers. Talk about aggressive guys. You've got two of the best, as you just heard the guys in the booth say, with Keselowski and Chastain. You know those guys want to get to victory lane themselves. Who do you want behind you? Well, they're all going to be aggressive right here. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be, you know, come down to the finish. Everybody's going to be aggressive at this point in the race. Chase Elliott, though, I think has been the most aggressive guy in the race. And that's what's got him in the position that he is in. 42 race winless streak for Chase Elliott. 106 for Brad Kozlowski. Mike, you know those guys are super hungry to get to victory lane. Oh, absolutely, Shannon. And we have just five laps to go. Remember, William Byron led only the last six laps here last year after getting the lead on our late restart. Chase Elliott in the number nine, Talladega, fall of 2022. Five wide behind him, but he went to victory lane. And that was the most recent time. Had a tough 2023, had to sit out for a couple of stretches. But now, I'm seeing a Chase Elliott today that I haven't seen show up in all of the latter half of 2023 or in the first eight races of this season. I like it, Mike. I, I love how aggressive he has been. We've talked about it all day. Right from the drop of the green flag, he has been side drafting, pushing three wide, doing everything that he needs to do to fight every single lap to, to gain a spot. Always a total team effort. Good organization. His teammates have been winning races. They've been getting better, bouncing back from last year, all this stuff that happened with Chase Elliott, the injury, all the stuff, right? Finally, all the pieces of the puzzle are coming back to the table, getting them put together correctly. I think this has been in the works for a long time, but it's not over. You've got a 53-time race winner on that outside. Don't forget that. Now, Denny Hamlin's been to victory lane five times since Chase Elliott last won. Chastain, always super aggressive on this. Probably going to be the inside of him, giving a push. Will he try to put him three wide, shove him out? The elbows, the gloves are off. Elbows up. Zane Smith, Kyle Lars uh, Larson make late pit stops here. All right. Now, Kevin. Well, now he's on the bottom. Chastain's on the bottom. It was more exciting when you called it the first time. It was very, very, I was, I was really surprised that he went to the top, but I, I wouldn't have. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> it's, believe me, it's all good. Yeah. A lot of things have happened today. That's just one of them. There's a lot to put keep it up aside. With. It's still going to come down to the second row and who gets yes, the best push. Exactly. Whether you're, whether you're top or bottom, it's going to come down to this, to the second row and who can get attached and push well, as far as you can into the corner. All right. How far can you push into the corner? Farther than you pushed all day. You remember when Keselowski pushed Gordon and then shoved him three wide? Yeah. All the, yeah. You, you remember that, right, Kevin? That's right. You pushed it back into the fight after yeah, the race. Right. Get in there, boy. 
<laughs> 13 caution flags, including the two stage breaks. <laughs> do you go early in the box? Keyword, do you go in the restart box? You go early or late? What do you do? You better go in the box, because if not, you're going to get a penalty. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you will be the first example. How about Reddick back up into contention? He and Briscoe have the fourth row. Byron and Suarez, the third row. Priest and Dillon, Austin Dillon, the fifth row. Elliot Hamlin, Chastain Kozlowski. Pace car is in. Here we go. Got a good jump on Chastain. Both cars have gaps be behind them. It'll be a two horse battle, one and two. Hamlin holding strong on that outside, probably stronger than anybody has so far. And Brad Keselowski just could not get his car rotated in the middle of the corner. Into three. He clear? He's Elliot clear. Clears and around goes Hamlin in the wall. Denny Hamlin crashes. Turn four. Before Elliott makes it to the white flag, so we will re rack and do it again. Denny was trying to hold tight in his right rear, and I think Chase Elliott was wanting clear. Aggression, we knew it. Both of those guys going for it. That's all you can ask for. One thing's for sure, nobody's sitting down. Yeah, and, and you see Chase Elliott come up the racetrack right there just a little bit. And a lot of times what happens when those cars get offset by a half a car length right there, it puts a lot of air on that right front fender and just gives that right front a little more grip than it's had all day. And we know how edgy these cars are. And it just turned that 11 car around. That's two guys going for it. Yeah. Neither one of them lifted. And that's what you would expect. I would expect Denny Hamlin to keep the gas pedal down and he has nothing to lose at this point but try to win the race. Dang so we'll try it again. Hamlin is still on the lead lap, though back in 32nd place. Well, we got a new player in the top four, William Byron, always sticking around, putting himself in position, grinding, grinding them out to uh, to stay alive all day. I like what you said, but as aggressive as Denny Hamlin is, there's one of them out there that's more aggressive, and that one of them is number one, Chastain. Well, let's walk you through this race. As you can see by the yellow slashes at the top left of the screen, it's been an eventful one. Each one of those is a caution flag. That is Christopher Bell at lap 100. And a bit later, lap 114, Carson Hosevar goes around with Kyle Larson. Josh Berry twice. The last one took him out of the race. Michael McDowell crashes. Bubba Wallace goes for a spin. Ryan Blaney off of Ryan Priest, John Hunter Nemechek, Ricky Stenhouse, Larson. And that's about half of what's happened today and just now. While racing to the white flag, Denny Hamlin. It is the third time today the second place driver has crashed. Michael McDowell, Bubba Wallace, now Denny Hamlin. And every one of them have been on the outside. Yep. And all in turns three and four. Jamie. Phil Surgeon for Ross Chastain. You guys are in second right now looking for your first win of the season. Do you think he has anything for Chase Elliott here on this restart? Yeah, the restarts have been crazy and, and been really good for us. We felt really strong in both lanes and um, 
yeah. Feeling, feeling good about it. All right, good luck. Thank you. So if you're joining us from the Masters, where Scott Scheffler has won by four strokes, keep an eye on William Byron. Uh, Byron has been to the Masters twice, and before racing was an avid golfer. His handicap has been as low as eight. My handicap's not good. Larry reminds us that last September, William Byron, who went to victory lane here, didn't lead until the final restart. Well, it's going to get aggressive, just like it did on the last one. But like Clint said, you have more aggression on the outside. We didn't see Brad Kozlowski get a very good restart last time. Both of the second row starters last time did not get attached to the front. So if they can get attached to the front cars this time, could play a big factor. Here's Ross Chastain's radio. All right. Well, now we get to have the conversation with them about not doing that to us. Yeah, copy that. Well, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Not pushing too hard? I'm not sure. I wonder. Got to switch up your jump. He went about right in the middle of the restart zone last time. So look for him to shake it up a little bit against Chastain. That's just gamesmanship of keeping them guessing and when you're going to launch. Now, on the last restart, there was no pushing from the second to the first row going into turn one. They were pretty well separated, row two and row three, from the first row. Well, that launch in, in which where you do that inside that restart is what dictates that, right? If you catch them off guard, you're watching your mirror, you're listening to his body, you're watching the car on the outside. Lot to manage right here for Chase Elliott. All right, here is overtime sponsored by Credit One Bank. Even at the line. Whoa, Kozlowski gave Elliott quite a shove there. Got him a little squirrely. Oh, turn two in the back. Put it out, put it out, turn two. And in the wall. I think he was definitely still in the lead. Uh, Harrison Burton rolls away. There's one car left up there. Might be the 16 of Kaz Grala. So we'll re-rack and do it again. Uh, Pressure my, continues, huh? Yeah, our, our yellow lines are blending together up top uh, for the amount of cautions that we've had. <laughs> there are not any more restarts that are more stressful than Texas restarts. And the later they get, the more aggressive that they get. And it's just, there's not much room to push harder. Well, you're out of options, too, when you're back there. You're, I mean, we've already seen four wide, three wide in front of them. They're all over the place. Desperation sets in. You're going for it. Casgarala was the other car involved with Harrison Burton uh, toward the back of the pack there. And we go right back to the same rules. Green, white, checker. If the leader takes the white under green, next flag ends the race. And coming up next on FS1, the NHRA four wide nationals from Las Vegas. You know, there's always an oh, by the way. Now we're assuming every time the, the every the, the every time these last cars last pitted on pit road that they definitely got it full of fuel. If that's the case, we're good to go. We've run a lot of cautions. As long as they're full, we'll be okay to make it to the end. But there's always that oh, by the way. You hear a lot of these guys, it's like riding on board with Eric Jones there with the ignition off coasting around there's two reasons why you do that Kevin yeah you, you're trying to save fuel but you're the really the main reason that you shut the engine off under caution is to try to cool the engine and you'll hold the gas pedal all the way down while the engine is off to run air through that intake manifold to get the intake manifold as cool as possible so you want the, the water and the radiator to get as cool as possible you want the intake manifold to get as cool as possible because that will help make horsepower well we've now tied for the most cautions ever in a 400 mile race on a mile and a half track. This is the second 400 miler at Texas, which now has the one cup race a year. And uh, talking to Speedway Motorsports and our friends uh, next door, 
Uh, they say they prefer the spring date to the fall date that they had. Um, they prefer not going up against the National Football League to draw fans to their track, and they like the new date and had a nice crowd on hand here to see it. Here's uh, Chase Elliott's safe, 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 safe. Posted all the way around here. Max saved it. Got to save a bunch here. Trey Poole, the spotter. Alan Gustafson, the crew chief. I don't like the way that sounded, Clint. You got to save as much as he can. Well, they were last on pit, ro on pit road at lap 212. Same time as William Byron, Tyler Reddick, Ty Gibbs, Chris Buescher, 207 and Ross Chastain lap 218. So if there is a concern, it's going to be in the pits of the nine, the 24, the 45, the 54, and the 17. There it is, chooses back, one to go. Back on the bottom goes Elliott, Chastain on his outside. The pushes are gonna come from Keselowski on the bottom, Byron on the outside. So, Larry, when you do a timed pit stop toward the end of the race on what you hope will be your last stop, how many overtimes do you plan for? There's just no way to plan for it, Mike. <laughs> you know, you'd like to know if exactly how many there was going to be. There, there's no way to plan on that. And the bottom line is you just want those. You want to minimize your time on pit road. And that's getting those four tires on and put whatever fuel you can, especially if you can make it to the end. Well, all right. So do you have enough gas for one overtime maybe? Or do you plan for two or none? My Whatever. decisions like that is the reason I'm follically challenged today. <laughs> I get it. Whatever you got is what you got. You're going to go for it at this point. Well, that's that's one reason why you save every caution, because you have no idea how the end of these races are going to play out. They've told Chase Elliott, you have enough fuel for one more green-white checker. Well, we're about to find out. This launch and where you do it is so important. It looks like Elliott's been starting deep in the box the last two times, and now they come off right even again. You see him wait for Keselowski that was rolling to him. As soon as that stopped, that momentum, he took off. Ross Chastain is still going to be on the outside when they get to the exit of turn two, so it's going to come down to Turn three, you see a great run by Ross Chastain down the back straightaway. Chase Elliott side draft to try to slow that down. Three wide mid pack, but everybody clean as we watch the leaders. Chase Elliott, he's clear. Clears Chastain for the lead. He's going to make it to the white flag, too. The race is going to be official. Byron takes third from Keslowski. Final lap. Kozlowski Whoa! turns the one. Byron. Yeah, Byron into the wall. Yeah, Yellow. Yeah, it's over. Chase Elliott is your winner, folks. He is back. Oh, big win for them guys. The leader did receive the white. Boys, you're going to Dawsonville. Chase Elliott wins the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400 on an overtime Everyone, restart for me. his 19th career victory. Chastain is not going to finish this race. It was actually off the bumper of Byron. He was slowing that outside as Byron was approaching him. And that's the fourth time today the second place car has crashed. Well, what a great day for Chase Elliott. We talked about it from the very beginning. That was a very aggressive Chase Elliott. We've talked about the struggles. We've talked about everything that he's been through. Today, he did not drive like he had those struggles, and he had a great car underneath him as well. You're going to see a lot of emotion out of him today. All right, let's back it up. Well, you saw Ross Chastain. I'm going to say Chastain gave him a lot of room. He was cordial to him, got this big run, chased door him a little bit, got a big run momentum-wise there, left the, was able to leave the throttle wide open down here in three and four, gets the lead. But I want to see when we come around here what happened off the of two. See Byron edge out Keselowski. 
Yeah, you saw Keselowski get loose right there as Byron came across his nose to take the line. I think Chastain got high. Yeah, what happened? Like he got high point. and had to lift. Yeah. And I, I just don't think that the 24 car expected. Watch how fast he's catching him right yeah. there. It's just at that point, you can't react that fast. That was an unfortunate ending for Chastain's great day that he had. And Ross Chastain will finish 32nd. Well, what a great day for Chase Elliott. He is such an important part of this sport. Family has a great heritage in, in this sport with his father and family and their race teams. And, um, you know, we've talked about the struggles, but today they have turned it around. These fans have all been waiting for this and, and I love the fact that he's doing the Polish victory lap there and waving to those fans. Well, you said it. He has an army of fans. NASCAR's most popular driver several years in a row. His father was before him. The Elliott name is huge in this sport. And he just answered for him, delivered back in victory lane. Elliott gets his first win at Texas in his 14th start. His previous best year was fourth. And it's, it's the first time he's had even a top five, let alone a win in this next gen car that's, on a mile and a half. Took the words out of my mouth. This yep. next gen car's been a struggle for him and they're slowly but surely figuring it out. The last few races have been quietly solid. Top five finishes and now we're in victory lane. Well, it's been no secret that he's, he's talked about the struggles with this car because let's face it, uh, this car, you have to drive different. You have to do different things with your hands and your feet. Uh, the way that it feels is different, and, and it's been a struggle for Chase, especially on these bigger racetracks, but today they put it all together. We saw a different Chase Elliott today yes, than we've seen this season and since he came back in 2023. There was a lot of want in the Chase Elliott today. William Byron is now credited with a second place finish. Brad Kozlowski third, Tyler Reddick, Daniel Suarez, the top five. This day has been a long time coming. Well, it's got to feel good. I know it feels good. You've been there, Clint. Not one in a long time to stand up on top of that car, hear the crowd cheer, and the relief that comes with that. That's what that's really what it is, relief. He knew he was capable of doing it. He knew he was with the right team, the right crew chief. Finally got it put together. Another one-two finish for HMS, by the way. Keselowski, before we get to Chase real quick, I want to tell you, that that's a whale of a job by him. Good turnaround. Reddick had a good weekend. Suarez, top five. Regan Smith. We see the look of relief on Chase Elliott's face. The 42 race drought is over. You drove intensely today. You did everything just right. How does it feel? Oh, man, it couldn't feel any better. Uh, First off, thanks to everybody that came out today. You guys are unbelievable. Um, what a, uh, you know, what, what a, <laughs> Hooters has been a partner of ours for a number of years now, and it's been a, a dream of mine to uh, pay respect to the late Alan Kowicki and, and um, driving this car to a victory and being able to do a Polish victory lap and um, just uh, really crazy how things you know, came full circle there in that moment. It was pretty emotional for me. Just, you know, he, he beat dad back in the day, and here we are, you know, sharing, uh, you know, his, his sponsor and, and having an opportunity to win today. So just, uh, man, couldn't be, uh, just couldn't be more grateful for this journey and, and kind of the, the path that, uh, you know, hasn't always been fun, but, you know, certainly have enjoyed working with our guys. We've been um, just working really hard and really well together. and. Um, like I said, it hadn't always been fun, but we've enjoyed the fight together. You mentioned you guys have been fighting together today. It was a fight on the racetrack all day long. That race looked like it was crazy to drive. How intense was it on the track with all the slipping and slide? Yeah, it was just crazy. This place is just so, uh, you know, so sketchy and, and, 
you know, I, I, I don't, I haven't seen a replay of, uh, you know, of Denny and, and us. I don't really know. I didn't feel like I did anything super uh, crazy there any more than anybody's ever done to me. Just had the run forward, and I, I want to look at it, but um, I didn't feel like I did anything to, to crash him. I think just uh, the circumstances, but nonetheless, apologies to him if so. But um, couldn't be more proud of our team. Thanks to uh, you know our partners at Napa and, and Chevrolet. Everybody, Hendrick Motorsports had a big week last week. Boss, thank you. Uh, thank you for sticking with me and just um, really, really proud of this and uh, appreciate all, all the folks back home that, that have stuck with me and, and uh, helped us get back on track. Chase Elliott, your winner in Texas. And Brad Keselowski brings it home third and Brad best finish at Texas since 2015. You weren't very optimistic coming into this one. How did you overcome and get this great finish today? Yeah, well, I'm not sure we finished third. I got to see the replay from NASCAR on that first before I'm going to concede that. But, uh, uh, you know, we, we didn't have a ton of speed. You know, honestly, like, I'm, I'm more frustrated than anything because I feel like we have a great team and we don't have the speed to go with it. And we're doing all we can do to overcome that. You know, the driver in me is frustrated because I feel like these are races I'm, I'm good enough to win and we don't have the speed to do it. And the only reason mad as hell because it's my fault for not making the cars faster. So. Uh, but still proud of the team that we have the, the pit stops and the strategy and execution to put ourselves in position to get a finish we probably didn't deserve, but earned with kind of some never give up spirit in him. Well done. We'll see you at the Super Speedway next week. Yeah, looking forward to it. Mike. Brad Kozlowski, NASCAR unofficially has him third behind William Byron in the rundown. And Chase Elliott breaks that winless streak and goes to victory lane in Texas, his first win on a mile and a half in a next-gen car. Next week, we'll be at Talladega Raceway 2 Eastern on Fox and the Cup Series race 3 p.m. Eastern on Fox. We'll see you there. The NHRA is next. Chase Elliott overcomes overtime and drives to victory lane in Texas.